First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. Word. All right, all right. Today's show is going to be on music industry, its rise, and its fall. Of course, you know who's the special guest. As my man, Brother Panic, and he's on once again. Brother Panic, are you on the line? Yes, sir. What's going on, Brother Aline? All right, all right. How you doing today, God? Everything's looking good. You know, as you know, if anybody else don't know, you know we busy these days because we got our big thing happening this Sunday. Right. So, you know, just getting back, ripping and running, trying to get the information out as well as get the thing set up so we can do it big this Sunday. And it looks like it's going to be an absolute big one. You know what I mean? People oh, are coming right. out I appreciate to Brother you, Aline. Oh. oh, yeah, appreciate you too, brother. All right. So, so, you know, people coming out, you know, for you. So it's looking real good now. Right, 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 right. Well, I appreciate that once again. You know, yes, and I'm glad that, you know, threw up in the mix also because, um, you know, um, people are waiting to hear you. You know, shoot, they, they um, want you uh, to do um, something of that, um, of that magnitude. You know, so I, I know, you know, that you got a large fan base. So, you right, know, I, right. you know, us tying the um, little fan base together and definitely getting the people out, you know, in order to um, hear something, you know, which that would definitely help them. Something practical. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something practical. We'll get it done. You know, we're making it there. Um, you know, I say first, you know, I, I, I really, one of, one of my passions is actually bringing some of the people who help me become even in, a person of interest to hear this kind of information from. Right. So, you know, um, you know, as I told people that, you know, I, I refuse to just create a forum just for myself. So mm-hmm. I want to create a forum to show people that it's about all forms of information to bring you to one place. We are too uh, separated, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I'm dark side or I'm a, I'm a this from that or I'm from this group and that group and it, we clash in like in fact like it's rap group you get what I'm saying like it's old rap battles no doubt. so one of the one of the brothers who I've uh, one of the greatest lessons I learned is how to mix all forms of information and in my mind you are one of those brothers who have accomplished that well I've seen you talk on a world of subjects you get what I'm saying 
And even though, I, and I wouldn't even know this to say, but let's just guess, your foundation being a more, and um, and I know you was a five percent, and I know these personal things. But if people, when people see El Bay, they're gonna look at you as a more. But even as a more, I've seen you touch on so many subjects, which gave me inspiration to have an unconditional or un uh, a, a non agenda when I studied, and that that's really was a key to me getting a lot of work done for myself. So you know, I did. So the first thing I want to do is bring forth a lot of these teachers. Brother Wayne Chandler, you know, you, you know, the list goes on. Anybody who's willing to participate, and eventually, I'm sure um, someone is going to say, "Look, it's about time that, for you to stop playing and do something in terms of a live lecture." So, you know, the first thing is definitely, you know, like I said, you're one of the guys who epitomized that that I was able to see go in so many different places and you know, competently. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's where we are. So that's you know, that's part of the reason why. Aleem is the first person I chose to start this lecture series off with, you know. Oh, so, yeah. No doubt. You no. know, I'm... Yeah, I mean, shoot, um, um, number one, um, I'm grateful, you know, and I'm definitely thankful, you know, for you even considering me, you know, and, um, mm-hmm. you know, and um, going to this extent and getting things out and um, getting the people coming in. So, you know. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, let's let's see what we can um give give them to um give them tonight. You know, in terms of right. um, again, the street, what you got for us? Uh, in terms of hip hop, okay. Um, yeah. you know, hip hop. Uh, I've talked about it before. I did a whole historical one with Eye Opener and Brother Shabazz. Right. And I did a little history thing. You know what I mean? Because pe- so many people ask about hip hop, and you know, I get it because uh, it was it it. You know, it's, it's something we all, at this point, is about 40 years old. You know what I mean? 19, you know, actually about 30 years, actually. 1978, King, King Tim the Third, And actually, that was the first record. Um, and those records were only imitating something that was happening already big in New York. So so guys like King Tim the Third, who we possibly doesn't even have a rap history, heard this craft. The next in a couple of years, Curtis Blow, who was a part of that New York scene, um, and then eventually to the to the Sugar Hill Gang, and then the list goes on. And we'll get we'll go through that type of detail, I guess. So it's been around for thirty years, and there's you know no matter how metaphysical, how many capes you may wear, or how big your hat is, rap has definitely influenced too many people to the point where, for me personally. I spent a lifetime uh, getting a check from it. And that always separated, you know, the fans versus someone who you would certify. If you had to pay your rent, do or die by it. That's how we looked at it. If this person is paying their rent by this music game, then they in this game. If they're doing it for extra extra money, you know what I mean, that's nice and you're involved, but live or die by it. There was a time where I just based upon – industry ignorance. I filled out the wrong paperwork. I had to go work at UPS loading trucks. That shit is that shit is no fun. Just because I didn't understand how fast I had to put in some paperwork for overseas money. So it's, it's, it's a very hard, and, and that's going to be the theme, that it is an actual business. People think it's something creative, but it's an actual business, and, 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 we'll, and we'll go through all of these steps tonight. Now, this this is this is going to be about the rise and fall of the music industry. And why I'm doing this, I believe, is because even as conscious folk, conscious folk actually believe that somehow, in some way, we're going to take over the record industry and start teaching kids again. And it is probably, it was a wake-up call for me and and I hope you could get that same wake-up call. So we're going to talk a little bit how the business has changed based upon its degradation through time. The height of rap is over. It's a done deal. You get what I'm saying? And so people always telling me in panic, listen to my music, and we're coming back like never before. It is the most unrealistic thing based upon the concept of business, and we'll get into that. So I guess we should start at the start. Now, I, so i tell you so – you know that I'm, you know, I'm not just a fan and a guy who's just a avid studier of hip hop. Lived and died this shit. 
I grew up in Queensbridge. Queensbridge, what made it so special? Um, first and foremost, there, there was a, it, there was always an era of consciousness there, and, and you could even tell from Nas. Even the music he's ma- making within all of this degraded music, there's some form of consciousness there. You get what I'm saying? So it was it was a very energetic place. But the trick was there was a guy named Dr. Bob Lee. He grew up there. And he was one of the first, I can't say the first, but one of, a, a, a big instrument on a radio station called WBLS. Black-owned radio station. It is there to this day, 107.5, um, Frankie Crocker, many, you know, this is, this is a classic, iconic radio station. And it also had WLIB. WLIB was its AM version, you know, the same, the same way we have uh, 89.3 in Atlanta. So they would experiment there. And Dr. Bob Lee was on WBLS, the main station. He had one of those voices. He's still around. So in their experiment, they hired a guy named Mr. Magic. Mr. Magic first started on WLIB with a rap show. And um, he was a voice. Um, And he needed someone to spin the record, someone smart that can handle it, just a step above a DJ. Dr. Bob Lee recommended a young man named Marley Mall from Queensbridge. Marley was young, at the, younger than these guys at the time, but Marley was a genius with equipment. Um, he knew how to, uh, at the time, the hot thing was to do the real, what remixes were, were actually editing of songs. So songs like Padlock by Heart and Nothing Going On But The Rent, it was around this time, and they would just do their personal editing. There were stars doing this, Shemp Pettibone, a white boy. This, all they would do is, if let's say Janet Jackson made a record, they would hire Shemp Pettibone to edit it, and, and, and it would be a hot edit, and that would play on the radio to keep the song um, going on. What we know, the concept of the remix, we know now they just use a different beat and so on and so forth. Um, uh, so... That's what it evolved to. So Marley was good at that. He, and um, that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to be the next Shen Pettibone and break into the game this way. What they did was Bob Lee took Mr. Magic to a jam in the park. He seen Marley Mall. He seen Marley Mall's ability to, to, to work the machines, hired him. And as soon as he hired him, WBLS took uh, Mr. Magic off LIB and put him on WBLS. Now this, and I'm telling you this so you can understand how it how it rose up, and now we're going to talk, and we're going to get to how it fell. Um, this was a breakthrough. This was a breakthrough. And listen closely when I say this: nowhere else on the planet, this had to be '83 or '84, could you hear rap music on radio? The end. There was no other concept of this. This. You would hear Curtis Blow, these guys, uh, 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 um, Curtis Blow, uh, 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 Sugar Hill Gang, a few other records would make it to what they call daytime rotation, meaning because there's enough hype, enough payola, which means you paid off the DJ, or enough connections where they would walk into Frankie Crocker and get some spins. But this was based upon nothing but us aggravating record companies, come on, come on, come on, come on. And a few would make it uh, uh, fearless for problems of the world today. You know, you had to have a message, if you will, something relevant. So now you had Mr. Magic on BLS, very breakthrough. They got a three-hour show from 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. The same time this big announcement happened, further down the dial, 98.7 KISS FM brings on Friday the last – Every Friday they rotated Latin Rascals, then Chuck Chill Out. Every Friday on, but every Saturday, every Saturday was Red Alert. So, so, so for Kiss to keep up, they 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 created their three hour rap show at the same time. Molly Mall was the favorite. Molly Mall was the favorite because Molly Mall could produce. He could create records, and therefore Coogee Rap, The Juice Crew, MC Shan, Roxanne Shantae. Uh, uh, Craig G, uh, uh, 
Big Daddy Kane, Biz Marquee, Frickin' Frack, and in, he was in Spoonie G. He was able to produce songs, and since he had now the 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 only the the one of two outlets to play rap, every song was a hit. He controlled it. He made he made the world see rap through his his window because he had that level of control. And there and then and then it began. And then Red Alert could not produce uh, records. So, uh, and this is the real story. KRS One actually came to Mr. Magic and Molly Ma to get down with them. He came to BLS to play his demo to actually be down with the Juice Crew. Mr. Magic said, yo, that's just some bullshit that you playing. Took his tape, threw it out, and said, if you want some hot shit, you got to be like my man Molly Maul right here. KRS one left with his tail between his legs, went on down to uh, uh, 98.7 Kiss to Red Alert. And then the next thing you know, the bridge was over. And, and, and actually the first song was South Bronx. They did South Bronx. At the time, this was in 1987, maybe, or 86 or 87. Molly Maul had got me a job at USA. That was United States of America. I was DJing at United States of America. This is where I met DJ Clark Kent, who we later produced, and I met DJ Scratch, one of the masters on turntable to this day. In fact, he just won this, that DJ. Uh, there was a DJ contest on New York one of one of these black things where he's the worldwide DJ. He, he got sponsorship from Bacardi, and he's got his picture on the Bacardi bottle. When I talked to him, I was like, yeah, what's going on with that cousin? He's like, yeah, chilling this, that, to that. We reminisce. But he's a good friend. He's one of the master DJs to hit the planet. So I met him. He's the first one to play South Bronx. To me, my boy DJ Hot Day, who's still around. DJ Hot Day lives with Ron Artest now, and they do, they do work to death. Together, because Ron Artest, the basketball player, also grew up on the same block as Nas and Hot Day. So, uh, so I brought, we the first one that brought the song South Bronx to Molly Maul's house. Me and Hot, check this shit out. He was mad. They used a sample. Uh, uh, they used a, in that song in the chorus. They used Funky Drummer. And at the time, Coogee Rap did a song called It's a Demo with that same sample of Funky Drummer by James Brown, which was a direct, you know. And um, so Mars, they fuck. He was mad. He was blaming it on Mr. Magic, so on and so forth. Me at the time, there was a group who didn't have any big hits, but you'll, they're most known for Bismarcky saying, we got freaking frack in the house. It was a group. We had about four songs. It was a girl group who I brought to Molly Ma. I sucked as a DJ, but no one understood how to produce at that time. Molly Ma did, so that's why Kane, there's Marky, and the rest of them went through them, and they all had their own ideas, but nobody knew how to, what they call, program a drum machine. They had a drum machine called the SP-12, then the SP-1200, which had a, its own disk drive, which was which was the beginning of people being able to sample, loop, and produce their own songs. Once I got one of those, I was a monster. There was a drug dealer who bought that for me early on before we were even making enough rap music to, 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 to be able to master that at that level. So I was ahead of the game and got a lot of money because I knew how to program first, a lot of ends. So now, um, so... That's when Kane and them started doing their own albums and biz, and they all left Marley because they figured, why well, pay him for something we could do? And so, it, 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 like I said, at this time, there was actually really no methodology for rap music. You would just throw things on the wall and see what stuck. For instance, um, they were laughing. Him and Shan, when they recorded Rock Him, they never heard nothing like this before. And they would, each time he would drop a verse, they would run around the corner and laugh. And then you see, you see, if you look at the original album, Marley said, I don't even want to do it. He let Shan engineer that album. He was like, just do that, because every B was paying. And you see what that become, became. So no one had this ear yet. That ear started coming into play with some other geniuses that I worked with, which was called the Bomb Squad, who did all the public enemy, um, uh, public enemy work. And this bo the Bomb Squad knew how to, they created, it takes a nation of millions to hold us back, but Fear of a Black Planet 
was in total reaction to the first album. If you took a Kane's album, it was, let me throw it to the wall and see what, it was just a bunch of good records. Then the next album is another good records, but it didn't seem like a continuation. If you want to understand why is that important, because I'll give you something more current that shows you how important that was in that methodology for rap, which was Biggie. Each album he did done has been a continuation and an evolution. That didn't exist before Public Enemy did Take the Nation, then Fair of a Black Planet. So to move on, um, uh, at this time, uh, uh, I did the freaking frack, left him. I was a sucky DJ. Then I started working with a guy named Super Lover C. We had a few hot songs. Um, we had a song, Do the James. You can look all that shit up now. Girls, I got them locked. Um, my man Rudd did the production, but I guess you could say I was a creative consultant at the time. None of these titles really, we even knew what they were and how to be at the time. So that was a hit. Me and my boy Hot Day did a song. We took a new edition acapella, and we took Public Enemies. Uh, uh, I can't remember. The, 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 the song, Public Enemy, the first Public Enemy song, which was titled Public Enemy Number 1, they used James Brown, Blow Your Head. They had an instrumental. We did a mix. We printed it up ourselves, put it out. Interesting story about that. They couldn't play it on the radio in regular rotation at the time because there was no precedence for mixes like that. So they would play more New Edition or more Public Enemy, but they wouldn't play our song. And it, the song was so big in New York, we, we went to the garden, and nobody knew who it was. We couldn't really do it. So Terminator X threw that song on and lit the garden the fuck up. God, whatever God. That, that that's crazy because we was playing the hell out of that shit on campus um um down here in North Carolina. Oh, you remember? Yeah, we gave that was DJ Hot Day. Um, mix. Yeah, that was our shit. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah, right? Crazy. Yeah, yeah, girls, I got them locked. Pump it up. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Super Lover said, "Yeah, it's my man to this day." That was all us kid. We went on tour. That was it. After I left the freaking fact, that was us. We we had New York. It was our song and Milk and Giz. We used to go on tour with them all the time, all the time, all all young. Now, um, he lit this song up. This was the hot day mix, lit, that, lit the garden up. We couldn't do nothing about it, couldn't capitalize. The funny story is about years later when I worked with Public Enemy, I'm like, yeah, remember that song? He's like, yo, that shit was the uh. I said, yo, that was me and my man. He went crazy. We never knew who made that shit because they basically <laughs> took the credit. It was their beat. But then I was telling, then I see my man Hot Day, yo, Hot, you know, you know, years later, yo, no, I got a chance to tell Chuck about the song. Then the Hot Day said, here's some crazy shit. I was chilling with Eric B, and I told New, I, New Edition came in, and I told them that was us who made that shit, and they went ape shit. So I was like, yeah. wow, that was funny. He told New Edition, and I told Public Enemy. So after around this time, um, it, we we getting uh, more in the '90s now. This is this is bringing us. After 88, after Super Lover C, we're getting more in the 90s. Around 88, Clark Kent, who I met at USA, um, he started getting at me. At this time, I had the drum machine, so my production was really advanced. He said, yo, all I want to do is just work with you. Here's the keys to my house. It's coming and work. So I would come in, bang it out, bang it out beats. He's telling me we got some nigga named Jay-Z coming. We got this dude. I, there's this dude in Brooklyn named Biggie. All of this shit is coming. It's about to come. Just hang out. Just keep tapping it up. Stay at the crib. There was this dude, Will, who was in a group called Original Flavor. Him and Jay-Z eventually did a song. They, they was doing all that fast rapping. It. I was showing Will how to use the drum machine. So now, in the midst of this, Marley calls me. He's like, yo, I need an in-house producer. So I'm, you know, I'm looking at it as this is family. So I bounce him, not knowing what the fuck a Jay-Z was, not knowing what a fucking dick he was. Like, you know, you look in hindsight and go, God damn, that was a big dick move. But not knowing who they was, and so, so bounce. Go to Marley's. Marley offered me a little salary, but it's a salary that he would take against future royalties. At this time, now we're going to start talking about how it's starting to fall a little bit. The difference from before with Marley, he was the standard and he made the standard. He was, he was on... He, he left the radio at that time, but this is the conversation he would have. We need to get back on. We need to look at what Pete Rock and them are doing. At this time, Pete Rock reminisced. It was 92. Jermaine Dupree, jump, jump. So his mind was more into duplicating what it was or that was happening. 
In other words, he became an industry bitch. And that's what we're going to talk about as well. There's a before where you this creative guy who just wants to take over the world with your samples, and then once you have to pay your bills by it, the record company dictates what it is they need you to be doing. And once you did, because now you got to pay mortgage, you got to keep up with all that shit you like to drive, and that's where it begins. Once you actually in, that's where it starts to fuck up. And we're gonna see, we're gonna get to where that's that's how they got us now, and that's why you have a motherfucker like Weezy in existence. So now, um, so he's talking that I wasn't feeling that. And everything started getting similar. Um, there was Dots Effects. We heard demos. He creates a group called the Lords of the Underground. Panic, I want you to work with the Lords, exclusively you, blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, well, God damn it, that's, you know, look, you know, that, that's the, the Underground and Dots Effects straight from the sewer, the same concept. So now you're following trends as opposed to making them. When you, even, when you had uh, Jermaine Dupree making a new trend, the beginning of the rise of Atlanta as a music scene. You get what I'm saying? Then the brat after that. So um wasn't liking what was going on. I'm doing dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Not showing up. We, it, was, it was like savages. We would come to this house, would not see daylight, just banging beats. You know, my man Andre... Andre's one of the baddest motherfuckers, played on so much shit. You know, he could, you know, never was formally trained. You want to talk about melanin and gods? I mean, you will see amazing shit. Niggas who don't know nothing, just board here, play keyboards, play, oh, you know, played on everything. We did all that round the way, girl. All that shit was happening. At this time, Marley did the Mama Said Knock You Out, so he had a budget of a million for, for that year, so that's why he hired me. So I'm not liking what's going on. I'm doing dumb shit, dipping out, not coming up for three days. Once um, Moni Love was coming up, I'm tapping shit out for Moni. It was a, a new terrible album. Ice T coming through to work with Moni. A new terrible album. Molly's trying to hold on. Moni didn't like to work it, at the house, so we went to a studio called Unique in Manhattan. You know, so I was. He lived way upstate. It was hard to get to him. I lived on Roosevelt Island at the time. So I'm home coming in. This nigga just sitting me down. How does it feel to get paid without doing nothing? I was like, this is delicious, dog. So when LL came back, left Marley, went back to Clark, and we was doing shit. He was saying Biggie and him is closer. I just said, ah, fuck that. Then uh, started shopping demos. There was a sister named Monica. There was Monica and Terry. They, they were a group. But they were actually something like the Good Girls or, or something before that. But they became, they lost one of the girls and became Monica and Terry. Monica, she knew me from the Super Lover C days. Girls, I got them locked. If you see the girls, I got them locked vid uh, video, which you can see on YouTube. You'll see me in the video looking like a derelict with some goddamn uh, acid wash jeans on. You get what I'm saying? You'll see it now. You won't miss it. And a goddamn slope haircut looking like Bobby Brown, my prerogative. So we went and... Um, oh, you had that Gumby cut? <laughs> well, it wasn't, it wasn't full-blown Gumby. It was more of a slope, the shit from the front. My shit was looking laid and glade, you know what I'm saying? Uh, for the time, I was all right with it. But, you know, right about now, you, you right, look right. at that and say, now I have seen it all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you'll see it. If you look at the girls, I got them locked. You, you, you'll you see it now. now that check you know that what out. Cause, for, uh, that was one of my own favorite joints um, around yeah, the Yeah, that, that was a monster. <laughs> that was a monster. That was a monster. That, that was a real monster because we had the one hit due to James, and right. they didn't know we could do it again. So when you come, when you hit that second one, you know, that's it. So that one was big. That's the one we did the video and so on and so forth. At the time, the money was incredibly skinny. You get what I'm saying? Right. Incredibly skinny. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, you would think we were doing shows for like $1,000. You know what I mean? And the music was only focused on the tri-state areas, uh, New York, Connecticut, and Philly. And sporadically, you would hear it going down south. For two reasons. At this particular point, college radio embraced everything yep. rap. That's where it existed. And yep. then the other other way, people would bring Marley Mall or Red Alert tapes to college with them. Everybody from New York would go to a college in the South. So they would bring these tapes. You get what, what I'm saying? It's all about these these tapes and, and, and so on and so forth. So See, we were not like that. Was my hustle. Right, that was the hustle. Tapes for cats. 
um, you know, all the information mm-hmm. and knowledge, you know, and music mm-hmm. that I brought from New York down to college. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the science. That was it. That people people were getting, and you know, so you send me a packet, send me tape all the new Molly Mall, send them down. That so that was the hustle. And we were, you, you know, us New Yorkers, even still now, arrogant. We can't do it now because the South are rappers now, so they got a whole lot to be, you know, proud of. But at the time, the only source of rap, this new cutting edge shit, um, you can close that door, Torrent. Uh, the new cutting edge shit was um, was all coming out of New York. It was New York or nothing. And, you know, it eventually went to L.A. That was the second place, but they were actually imitating us. You know what I'm saying? And then the, the, the first noise other than that was Texas with uh, Scarface. Now, so... So, um, the next, so after that, I got with Hank Shockley because all my life, all I wanted to do was work with Public Enemy. Got with Hank Shockley. We did remixes like ABC, you know, after Monica hooked me up. And, you know, Hank, Hank put some good money in my pocket, remixes, remixes. And with remixes, you could live off a remix. In fact, that year I was with Marley, all he was was living off a remix and none of them came out. I think we, we did a song for the movie Class Act. One of them, you know, and it was real corny, and he was just disgusted, so he let me do the remix. And yeah, that's what, that was that Kid and Play joint. Yeah, the Kid and Play movie. After the house parties, they did a class act, and then it was a, there was a song they got on the stage where Paulie Shaw was dancing. They right. did the song, they sent it up, and we remixed it. Now, with a remix, for instance, it'll, it'll, they'll do it like this. For instance, let's say you have a song out and it's hot, they'll give it to a lot of different camps, three different camps to remix. So they say, all right, remix this, and then he has $4,000 to remix. So they give it to me, Panic, Bobby, and Phil. We all remix it. Whoever they like the best get the second half of that money. So they'll give us five Gs. If they like the remix, 10 Gs on the back end. So you so you can live just on the, you being a, a, a producer of interest, they're going to get you that money just to see what you come up with. None of them, very few of those remixes were passing. A couple of key sweats and a couple of other things at the time. But we were still, he was still eat, eating off that front money. So same thing with Hank doing that same thing. When they do stuff like that, they'll get a hot nigga from the street. And that, because I knew how to program, I was that nigga. You get what I'm saying? So I could just bang it out. Like, for the most part, I felt Marley had me up there for the most part because, you know, him living up in the suburbs, he was losing that energy. And me and, me and him was always cool so when I came up there, we just hooded the place out. You know, we up there ranking, joking, eating heroes. So he got back in the he got back in the mood, and a lot of what came out of the Lords of the Underground was because we got back into that zone. You know what I mean? Because the zone, that zone is the most important for creativity. And really, rap is a hood art. So when you're out the hood, that's when it's really over. So all these dudes who's even making this shit in these big houses, it's because they're making factory music. You get what I'm saying? Not creative. And we'll get there. So um, so after Hank, that's, um, that public enemy money was ridiculous. Worked with Chuck, and, and it was a dream. It was like, this is the hottest song I've ever made. Because, you know, I put everything. Was, after that, I kind of lost my interest in it. And now we're talking about 1994. Moved to Jersey, was chilling, just eating off the of PE money. Chuck was like, what else you doing? I'm like, nothing. And, and, you know, that's when I filed the wrong paperwork and, um, and, and had to go work at a, a goddamn UPS, like a regular, a regular John Henry or somebody <laughs> busting up the shiffer roll. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so after that, I was kind of tired, but really, I didn't really know. And now I understand all this laws of attraction and all the regular stuff. I programmed myself for Public Enemy. I loved Public Enemy. It was the greatest thing. I thought they was from goddamn Saturn, and they came to Earth to teach us lowly Negroes. So I really didn't have no energy for it. You know, people were coming at me. Clark was now Jay-Z, Biggie, all of them niggas is happening. Clark Kent, my main man, had, um, you know, he had, at that time, he built them up. Could have easily walked into that. And, And another quick thing. And then we'll start getting into the business side of it. Nas, I mean, to, to tell you how arrogant I was, Nas lives up the block, but he was like a shorty to me. So L.E.S. 
who was a producer, used to be like, yo, you need to get with Nas and Havoc in them, kid. I'm like, them little niggas, kid? Nah, you know what I mean? You need to get with them, kid. They're going to be the next shit. L.E.S. stuck with their asses. I'm like, nah, kid, I, I can't do it. Begged me. I said, right, I'm going to give Nas a tape. Gave Nas a tape. Nas said, yo, I heard one on it. I want for my album. This is the first album, mind you, the Five Mike and the Source album. I'm like, all right, kid, get at I'm like, all right, kid, get at me, get at me. I'm going to see you. Nas is calling. Yo, panic, man. I just need that. We're we about finished. you got to hurry. I'm like, I'm going to get at you, kid. I'm going to get at you. Just totally not believing in this shit. I'm looking at live from the barbecue. See, because that was the beginning when they would start rapping monotone. My name is Nas, kid, and I'm going to do it. And prior, my era was like, and I'm flipping and dipping and ripping and flipping and dipping. So everybody was all excited. So we could, me and Clark Kent was listening to it. Um, we did, it was around the time we did the remix of Chub Rock, just the two of us. He played Nas. He said, yeah, that's your man from the hood, kid. He's like, yo, I don't get it. He said, I totally don't get that. And I'm like, I ain't going to lie, kid. That's my, that's my little man. I don't get it neither. So word is born, he got five mics in the source. Oh, I was crushed. Years yeah. later, it was something else. Um, there was a dude that used to film the hood from when we was real little, Harvey. Harvey never gave up them tapes. Harvey gave me those tapes. I called Marley. This was like in 99. Yo, dog, guess what I got? Harvey tapes. And I'm naming niggas from the hood. You want to see this? This nigga on the stage singing house music, you know, all this kind of shit. So he said, Nas is doing a Queensbridge album. He's going to want that footage. So I have him call. Nas, oh, panty, yo, what up, kid? Da, da, da. I'm like, yeah, what up, dog? This is what's good. He's like, yo, I was going to come to your house because uh, uh, what's the Uchi Wally niggas? Gravehearts. My man Wiz. All of them is fan, but my man Wiz was here in Beats. And Wiz was like, yo, we want, you know, now nah, I just putting together Brave Hearts, we want Beats for it. I said, well, y'all come over and pick out. So I said, y'all come over Friday. So Wiz came. Wiz was Nas's friend since they was real little. Wiz came, and a nigga named Karinga came. So Karinga's in the crib. He was my man. Oh, well, he said, I want to do this. I'm working with this nigga. We here. Blah, blah, blah. So when Karinga bounced in the, my living room, my man, my man G was like, yo, Nas was outside. Karinga is Cormega's cousin. And Nas, Cormega was in the firm with Nas, but they had beef. So right. Nas ain't want to come in because Karinga was there. I'm like, this nigga done fucked up this money. So not, when I seen him again, he was like, yeah, I was going to come. I came to your crib before. I was going to come. Da, 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 da. I said, all right, let's go see this footage. So he's like, yeah, I'm at a video. I'm editing my video now. Boom, we went. Word is boom. Me and him talking. Jungle is his brother. Jungle was little, so I didn't remember him. When he pointed himself out on the tape, I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember you. The niggas were telling me, yo, panic, kid, because they're younger than me. I said, yo, kid, you was one of the illest niggas in the hood. Yo, kid, I remember you did this piece in the river park. Panic. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, kid. I said, yeah, kid. I said, you remember you said, hell yeah, I remember I was going to put you on the first album. Nigga had that smirk. And I think, in like, years later through the years, niggas would, like when Nas is looking for shit, Nas is always telling me, nah, kid, I ain't hear nothing. I said, I know this nigga's getting me back for the first time. You know what I'm saying? Because my shit was, the whole hood would be lit up. So Wiz would bring him the tape. I seen, I ran into him in horse, and I said, nah, kid, I don't hear nothing, kid. So I'm like, oh, this nigga's still mad on that first shit when I was jipping him. You know what I'm saying? Right, So, right. you know, so around, um, if you go a little bit back, after I feel finished with the public enemy, that's when my, my sister always worked at record labels. Record labels. Now, um, she put me on. First she was she worked at Motown, Uptown, Polydor, Polygram, uh uh I believe Columbia, uh Mo uh MCA I believe, and I'm Bad Boy, BMG, and she used to tell me some funny ass bad boy stories too. You know, ain't nothing like a nigga who's on top and real arrogant. She was telling me that shit was so fucking hood there. You know what I'm saying? And maybe two or more than I'm missing. So she got me a job at the record label. Now, this is interesting because it's rare anybody who's on one side of the game gets to really see the other side of the game. And and this is where we're going to start getting into the degrading part of it in, in, in the science part. I just want what I did now was to let you know that no, I wasn't a fan. This was this was a lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is a lifestyle, and 
<clears throat> not just something I toyed around with and was, you know, and just wore my hat backwards. So as I'm working in the industry, I started to see the science on what it is we thought we were doing and what it is that these businesses were actually doing. Now, here's the inner work. Um, what I thought and what I know everyone to think, um, what I know everyone to think is that uh, you can make the greatest song with your greatest effort, with your greatest science, with your greatest form of intent and creativity, and somehow someone who's responsible for your song will go, oh, now I get it. Now I understand where you where you coming from. That is not the case. There is nobody who is in a business situation or in a business structure who gives a fuck about creativity. Creativity, you cannot market, not at all. What you can market is something that is guaranteed. So every record label is looking for something that is guaranteed. So the idea that you could put something from your own mind out and take over is an accident if that ha happens. Other than that, they need something that they can bank on. I always give this example. You are not going to walk into the hostess factory and say, guess what, I have a better Twinkie. No one gives a fuck because Twinkies work. They know what is in a Twinkie. The ingredients don't know, need or know how to change. They don't need no more chaos. You're coming down, well, I'm doing some authentic shit. They're saying, Twinkies ain't authentic. We don't give a fuck. Why have some authentic when we're doing a good job selling this fake shit to you? You get what I'm saying? So the fight has always been between your record company and your creativity. Now, one of the successes that we can to understand this more is actually Motown. There was something called the Motown sound. So you can look at it two ways. You can look at it as the Motown sound was a great sound and we had so much fun and it was a big, big master blast. But there are people who look at it that it was a cookie-cutter sound that all sound the same. Other people look at it, it was a genius formula for a record company because they had a formula now, and as long as any singer, any artist that worked with that formula, they were guaranteed to sell records. But, but at least that formula they had was a bit more quality. You get what I'm saying? A, a, a had a bit more quality. Right, the, right. Um, so... Uh, hold on, let me show my headphones again. It had a bit more quality. Okay, here you go. It had a bit more quality. So this, 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 um, um, what we have now is the same thing as the Motown sound with rap today. It is one continuous sound, one big, long, run-on sentence with a formula, but the formula is so degraded that 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 there is nothing you can do to counter any of this shit creatively, which is always and has been a dream of a record company. No, no surprises. We know if you played record number one, if record number two has the same elements, it's guaranteed. And at, with any business, you're looking for guaranteed sales. You're not looking to turn the world on its ass with a new sound. So is. So it's been a steady role of extracting creativity out of this process, like with anything. You get what I'm saying? It's almost like you're saying, we used to make homemade uh, Twinkies. No, no, no. We're trying to get it to a point where it's factory. And what you have is factory. Wheezy and all the rest of those guys, that's way down the line, way irrelevant. It started actually happening with authentic rap. As I pointed out, Marley pointed out that now he needs to sound like what Jermaine Dupri is doing. And even Hank Shockley from the Bomb Squad was all infatuated with Dr. Dre at the time who started coming out. The sound is different. They don't use this drum machine. They don't do that, which means now you are dictated by business and, uh, uh, and formula as opposed to creativity. You know, when you're that young bug, you think you're writing your rhymes, looking out the window, all of that's dead. So... In a business context, this thing has been – it's actually the perfect business now, perfect business right now because there's nothing, there's nothing you can do or add that's going to be new to it. It's, it's a dead form now. And remember, as I started out, 
What do you expect? It's been around for 30 fucking years. Eminem is just figuring out that bullshit. You get what I'm saying? And doing a terrible job of it. So metaphysically, it's on point. Because uh, if we were still using creative energy here, that means the 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 future that we're going to, um, it would take away from building that, you could say, uh, uh, worlds to come, realities to come. That's why a lot of our – it's actually a good sign that a lot of our creativity is gone, meaning that it has to go into another dimension. Your holistic self is separated in different dimensions here. And what you don't have access to here is it, it's, it's still your energy, and energy doesn't die. It's just, it's just it exists somewhere else. So us now knowing that we're in an ascension phase and knowing that we're in a phase of returning to our natural self, the real question is, will it happen here or will it happen in new worlds? We need new worlds to come. We done turned this world out. You get what I'm saying? It's a done deal. So when I seen the fall of rap, it was good. When rap was at its most creative, it did what it needed to do to put that frequency here. You get what I'm saying? And, and now it's going. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be eaten off this dead. So the record business has actually won. When I worked at a record label called Roadrunner, which is a rock label, and, and it's a whole different idea of how they market and sell rap, but the one thing that has never changed was their undying need to, to make this formula. Uh, I was telling you this before. There was a group called Fear Factor, a white group. Fear, and with rock music, it's a little bit different. They, like with rap music, they, you put it, you give your demo in, somebody hears it, they sign you. Later on, which was another form of the fall, if one group got on, got a hit, let's just say that Birdman guy, he puts the rest of those groups on, he puts the rest of his friends on. Because remember, they were always looking for a formula. So when Birdman got on, he put uh, Juvenile on, Wheezy on, and wh whoever else is in his camp. Wheezy now has that young money click or gang. So Nicki Minaj. So this is a way of a record company guaranteeing record sales by having a, a closed-in network based upon the first fool or the first dude willing to do whatever. You get what I'm saying? So this was a part of the degraded thing. And originally you just you had to send in the demo. You, you know, your friend, they put you on, but you had to stand on your own two feet. Now, with rock groups, it was a little bit different. Rock groups, they focused in on touring. These little bands, they focused in on building up a following, and the record company would react to their following. So that was their whole shit, selling their shirts, their tapes, creating their own tours, or getting or opening up for a bigger band. When they did that, the A&R would follow them on tour, and then eventually, after they're convinced, would get the rest of the heads in the company on board. And once they did that, the whole idea is, to build upon their following. So it was imperative that the record company let them create the kind of music that they wanted to create because they already had a following, and the record company was not really trying to get them a new audience, just to, just to expand on the audience they had by them staying true to their, to their grassroots or their, or, their, or, or, or their creative energy. Now, there was a group called Fair Factory, had a following uh, uh, that got signed three years. They were they were on the label, not making any fucking money, not going anywhere. But their their fans was following. Uh, one of the record uh, uh, the, the the record execs, his name is Jonah, had them do a remake of the song Cars. Who who made that Devo or somebody? And they killed that shit. They killed it. I ain't gonna lie. You know, I never listened to none of that shit, but they killed it. All right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in fact, that's why they hired me, because I didn't give a fuck about none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? I was, uh, for them, I was the general manager. So right. I had to look over money, hire a few folks to do, like, the office, you know, office shit, and hire a few folks so they could run the mailroom and, and basically keep this budget going. So they was fucking up because they was hiring cheap motherfuckers because they wanted to be around the hype. So he said, we can't do that. We're going to have to pay some money. I said, well, you're talking to the right fucking guy. And, and when they hired me, you know, you know I, didn't, I didn't know who the fuck they were. They would have what I found out to be later, legendary motherfuckers up in there in, the ter in terms of rock. 
I see these I see the niggas who work there get Google get start creaming over these dudes. I'm like, dude, I don't even know. I'm here for the pizza, kid. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know. So that's why they like me. So he did the record. They lost their whole entire fan base. He sold out. The record company was like, if their fans love him so much, they should allow them to make some money. So their whole idea is fuck all of that. You know what I'm saying? They have actually won because they have actually won at this point because they're hiring the most ignorant children. You get know what I'm saying? When I talk to children about what they're listening to now, I, I'm better off talking to a fire hydrant. You know what I'm saying? Better off talking to the grass. I'll get more results from that because they have totally become a product. It has totally become a product. I mean, you can get into all the metaphysics, the frequency of the music has changed and has dropped and all the rest of these things. But, uh, you know, um, not, it, it, it has dropped, but it still makes more money than it ever has in, 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 in the history. The, the height where the creativity, I mean, we can go into details, you know, when Puffy came along, what that was about. When he changed it, when he changed it on to uh, 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 this materialistic thing, this mindless bullshit and so on and so forth. So, so now that's the overview. Now we can get into some questions, I guess, about it and go into detail now that you have an overview of it. All right, all right. So let's go to the lines. Let's see if anyone got some questions here. We got a caller from area code 512. Area code five one two, you on the line. Peace. Five one two. Peace. I guess must just be listening. All right, yeah. all right. Um let me see. We got anything in the chat room going on? All right, somebody asked to speak on tragedy too. That's a good one. Yeah. Um Okay, I'm because I'm watching you in the chat room. I'm seeing all them jokes you're writing. Um, tra- tragedy is family. Uh, tragedy's family on the level where he could stay at my crib. You get what I'm saying? Tragedy's that's, that's my man. Tragedy, mom, could... Trash Gaddafi. Right. Um, um, my my uh, my mother and his mother were dear friends. Right. Um, and you know, you know, I'm not gonna put all his business in the street. But we we from the hood, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, things get hard. Let's just say that. But I was with my man, DJ High Day. He had his equipment at my house. I'm trying to DJ doing a very bad job. But I was good at programming. So I was fucking with the 707. Window was open. Trash came to my window. He said, y'all not wrong. You know what I'm saying, panic? Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you know, he's like a little brother. You know, come on, man. This nigga said around, I remember this shit, fear of the base. This nigga said fear of the base, speakers high function. Killing this shit for the, a little nigga. Quiet as kept, quiet as kept. Nas got his whole style from trash. Really real talk. And that's known, that's been discussed. Yeah, Nas that's been known. His shit in the New York um, area, trash. yeah, especially in the Queens area, yeah, that's been discussed and um, been talked about for, for ages. Mm-hmm. He got the name Tragedy because we did a song called Coke Is It. And he was talking about cocaine. One of the lines was going, the tragedy won't happen to me. It happened. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So niggas was calling him that tragedy. So, you know, he did his thing, got it clean, did it, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's, it's a hard life. You know what I'm saying? You in the New York City ghetto and projects. So it, it is what it is. But, you know, for years, you know, Trag's been around. Trag's was blessed. Uh, we did songs with Molly Mom on his In Control album, Trash. So Trash is fam. So, you know, up, up until um, I seen him maybe two years ago, ran into him in the city, you know what I'm saying? Me and him just parlaying and kicking it. I'm just dropping heavy metaphysics on this nigga. He was like, oh, shit. He was always conscious because he was always like an advanced kid, one of them kids who had to do a lot for himself. Right, I remember right. even before I was really into concert, he would always try to, he would, you know, um, I would always have a, a massive advice about music. So we would sit in the park, kick it, kick it, kick it. But when I became, I said, wait till the next time I see him, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to give him the business. Ran each other down on 14. You know what I'm saying? 14 was the illest park. That, fort, that shit at Union Square on Broadway, that park, oh, my God. Like, I used to work 
you know, I used to do computers. This is in this is in the two thousands. And um used to go to that park for lunch and fucking fall asleep and ha- and see fucking spirits walking around that park. That's why I seen and talked to Bruce Lee. Shit was off the hook. And at that point I wasn't on I was just talking to ancestors. So I'm like, I don't believe this is fucking three night three days I kept coming to this park, I see Bruce Lee walk, working out telling me that he wants to be recognized as a god. And I'm sitting on, but you married a white woman. He said, that shit don't even count. Next day, I want to be recognized as a god. I'm like, this ain't no Bruce Lee. I, I've never experienced that yet. And then third day, I, out of this meditation, I said, if you Bruce Lee, you need to prove that you Bruce Lee. Word is born. I open my eyes, a white boy start walk by with a Bruce Lee shirt on. That's said, oh, shit, I'm talking to Bruce Lee. I'm like, so what's going on? He said, I want to be, I was like, I want to be recognized as a god. Then I went back to work. My man Al was in the next cubicle. Yo, you should have said, I, um, nigga, huh? you, sh- you should have said, well, on a, on Earth you are. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Martial arts. No one, no one can, no one say that they would, you know, that they can beat you. <laughs> that uh, well, you are the, I, but millions and millions. Yeah, and yeah. Millions no, 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 no. We know that a master. You know, ain't, ain't no doubt. But I, I'll tell you the 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 whole science that unfolded. What was interesting was he was talking to me like like up, you know what I mean? When I would have seen him, I would have been bowing and all that shit to him. You know, oh, I was fucking Bruce. Right. When I went back, tell you how it unfolded, where all of that shit came out. When I went back to work, I just hear this karate sound. Stuss your eye. What you look? He said, "Return of the Dragon." That's when I said, "Oh, this shit is on. I can't wait till I get home." So I again, I said, well, "Why do you need to recognize you as a god?" He was like, no, y'all need to put me in that pantheon when y'all be doing it. I said, well, the only one doing that is Bobby Hemmett. So I told Bobby, yo, Bruce, he said, be recognized as a god. Now, at the same time this was going on, my cousin, my little nephew was calling me going, what mythology would it do had to pick the rock up and down the hill? So we're saying it's Hercules, not Hercules, not other. We're going through all of this. Rudra calls on the other line. He's like, Hercules? I'm like, nah. Bobby calls on the other line. We, I was on the phone with Seth. We was all trying. Bobby said, oh, I think that's Hercules. So I'm like, nah. Then we find it was somebody. We was calling him Sissy Foot. When I went to, uh, so we <laughs> laughing at that. He probably had to push that rock for gay sex, Sissy Foot. <laughs> then when I went online, it's actually Sisyphus. And what he did, Sisyphus did in the mythology, he was taking secrets from the Olympians and giving them to the Titans. And they, they took them in the underworld and raised them up. Bruce Lee then came back and said, that's my motherfucking mythology. And if you remember... Bruce Lee was telling secrets, Illuminati secrets, so-called, and giving them to niggas. I said, niggas raised you up because um, um, every nigga had a picture of you on his wall. Niggas would be, be wearing tri- Chinese slippers and Kung Fu geese to work, you know, to yeah. school and shit. And, yep. and so he was like, most definitely, he said it was him who raised up that movie, The Last Dragon. And then I said, you know something? That was probably one of out of the top ten profound movies. In that we, movie, you have the crazy shit. Um, uh-huh. I'm going to do an album called The Last Dragon, the Naga Chronicles, y'all. Oh, that shit would be tight. That, that, that's a tight title. That's a tight title. <laughs> Word is born. He, tell, he tells me, he's like, he was behind that movie. Because right. in that movie, you remember the, uh, Bruce Leroy. Right. First of all, Bruce is a nigga name anyway. But no Bruce Leroy was worshiping Bruce Lee. He's calling him the master. And the end result was like, no, you the master, the master. You don't never see no movies like that. Where you, sure. everything, even with uh, 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 Neo, Neo, uh, at the end, you had to believe in Neo. When Morpheus was the man and the woman, you, you believe in this Christ figure outside of yourself. You, you won't see that today where, especially even a black man, where they tell you, you are, the, you, he did this journey to realize all that power was in for that right. glow. So on and so forth. He said, no, that was his energy. You know what I mean? So, you know, did I, for, you know, I said, well, nigga, you seen The Matrix? Download some karate and my motherfucking like kung fu. My motherfucking head, nigga, download me. Nigga said, yo, my whole shit is off the, off the mind of the black man. It's off your own mind. And then, then well, I'm like, well, why did, but then I was like, well, why? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no doubt. Like, like that, see, but you got to remember, this was profound for me. Because hey, this that's is what very happened early together on. Um, Jack Kundu, you know, his own, his yeah. own martial arts style. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Oh, I mean, he's, his, well, he would say he studied nothing but James Brown and goddamn uh, 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 
Muhammad Ali. So it was no doubt. You know what I'm saying? He said all that shuffling shit he used to do was from Muhammad Ali. But now, th- at this time, it was profound for me because at this level of the game, I was just dealing with ancestors. I never had a fluid conversation. So I asked him, I was like, well, why would you come to me? He said, because at this particular moment, you know what I'm saying, if I became like Batman or Spider-Man, you wouldn't believe it's me because I was never a Bruce Lee fan like that. I seen Into the Dragon and all that when I was grown. So I was never, he said, I'm not a fan. Bob Marley and Jimi Hendrix and Peter Tosh came that same night. I said, I don't even know how to deal with it, deal with y'all. I was like, why are y'all coming? He said, and none of them, I didn't even know, Bob, you know, besides uh, we jamming, so I didn't know nothing about them. They said, if you would have known us, and I would have at that time thought it was just delusions of grandeur. You get what I'm saying? So this this park, I said, oh, I said, this park was a powerful park, and me and Trad sat in there built around the same time. So, you know, he's back home now, and, you know, his sister is on my uh, uh, other Facebook, my personal Facebook. She's out here, too. You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, I, I should, I'm going to invite her to the lecture so she can come through. We got a few callers here on the line. Let me um go yeah, to um yeah. we got seven five seven seven five seven area code. You on the line? Peace, peace to the peace. God. Peace, huh? Peace, peace, peace. What's going on, Panic? Hey, what's up, bro? What's up? Yo, 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 yeah. What's good, Lee, man? What y'all? Yeah, yeah. How y'all doing, man? We doing All good. Right, I'm chilling, my brother. Chilling, my brother. You got some questions yeah. for brother Panic? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to add on, you know what I mean? I'm um I just wanted to uh you know, shout out the homie tragedy, you know what I'm saying, for his um his masterpiece, Arrest the President, you know what I mean? Excellent. 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 Yeah. Arrest the President. You ever hear a song America East the Young? Tragedy. Yeah, um, I, America yeah, I don't East think the I heard Young. that one. Um, you can get that. One I was there when they recorded that with Chuck D on it. Chuck D doing like background vocals. One of my favorite. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah, I'm gonna check that. America East and Young. Yeah, you get on YouTube. It's easy to get another Ooh. masterpiece. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah, and I wanted to um, yeah, just add on too about um, you know what I'm saying the ancestor, the guy Bruce Lee. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And um, I was uh, you know, checking out some of his uh. You know the interviews they got of him on like YouTube and all that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and, and he was going in. You know what I'm saying, like on the metaphysics. You know what I mean, right? And um, right. yeah, because like you know when um, I've heard you uh, mention Bruce Lee before on previous shows and all that, and I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm right, I'm right there with you. You know, on him being a god is like, you know, he right. showed and proved. You know what I'm saying? He came down and he spit the knowledge. You know, just like when he put it in the mm-hmm. movie when he was talking about, you know what I'm saying, don't focus on the finger. You know what right. I'm saying? That's when right. he killed it right but there. He was just like, yeah. don't, don't focus well, on the well, finger. Let, let, let me say this, too, and I'll let you continue real quick. It's clear, even his earthly presence is a god. What I think he was talking about is for us to recognize him on the deif, on the deify level that we recognize, like, oh, to put it in, instead of saying he was an amazing guy who did some amazing shit, he needs to be above in our pantheon, you get what I'm saying, of what we're doing right now. So what he was doing then is related to what we're doing in our rise right now. I think he was trying to just make that connection. Because if you, as a standalone force, ain't no doubt he was a god, you get what I'm saying? And and one of the things he revealed to me about that very thing you're talking about, don't concentrate on the finger, there's a uh, symbolic meaning. You know you see Jesus usually with one hand on the heart and one finger pointing upward. And what that actually means metaphysically is that Jesus is telling you exactly where he's getting his information or exactly where he's going or exactly the source with his finger pointing upwardly. But as you know, most Christians focus on Jesus. So when he, that's, a, that's actually an occult, uh, a, a cult teaching. So when they were saying he was giving out Illuminati secrets, when he's saying if you concentrate on the finger, you're going to miss all the glory of the moon. Now, we know there's no physical Jesus, but he's saying if you concentrate on that image of Jesus, you're going to miss the point of what Jesus is talking about because Jesus was pointing with that same finger. So, and Bruce Lee told me that's what, what, he, what it meant. And, okay. and, and I, I'm going okay. I'm I'm to let you continue because, you, know, you know, to get with him, after I, I started figuring out, I, you know, at this time I was blown away 
that I would even command any of these people's attention. This was early on in studying and channeling. Later on, Bruce Lee came back and said, I was fucking all them niggas up with kundalini energy. He said, you can harness your chi energy. Because I'm looking like, he looked like he wasn't even hitting niggas. Remember all that fist? He put your, his fingers in your chest, make a fist, and you fly across the room. And I'm saying, it looks like you're not, you lightly moving. Now he said, because you can focus your, your kundalini energy to start fucking niggas up. So, no, we recognize it's not like he was saying it as if he was a deficit. He was trying to show that we could call on him now in the spirit world, and it goes beyond the admiration. As a, you know, We could call on him as an entity, a full-fledged entity, to start dealing with issues. You get what I'm saying? So if you need something blocked, you need some ass whipping, you ain't got to sit around and go, what you want to do, nigga? What you could do is just call on Bruce Lee and get him fucked up. You got him on your side. You got you know, you to be at that level or that frequency in that in that realm. So he was basically saying, recognize me as someone you can use. You get what I'm saying? In what you guys are doing now. For me it was like what you're gonna be doing. You, you know what I'm saying? So I don't wanna I don't wanna put it out if it comes off like he's saying, Reckon me as a God because I know you wasn't. He was a living God on earth. You get what I'm saying? Straight living God on earth. So we you know, I wanna make be clear on that. And I'm sorry, but I mean I know I was cutting you off a little bit, but you can keep going, I'm sorry. Oh no, it's all it's all good, man. You was you was going in, and um, yeah, cause I'm I'm with it. Yeah, Bruce Lee, he put it down, you know. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I want yeah. to explain now. You know, and Lean pointed it out. It's not like uh, we somehow certify him. I, what what I come to find out, what he was talking about is we can use that energy actively, the same right. way we use Lakshmi, uh, Horus, and and Oshun and. All that stuff that we use actively and set up at our house, get a picture of Bruce Lee and put him up. We were doing that anyway. Every house had a picture of Bruce Lee, you know what I'm saying, from Into the Dragon. So that's what he was talking about more or less, you know what I mean? We can call on him for information now. He's somebody we can get with to do this cause, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of us who came and set it off, like uh, uh, that General Chang is one of them, um, from uh, the Emperor Chang, rather. He's one of them. So, no, I came early to lay some groundwork for y'all now. You get what I'm saying? There's many more. Like, oh, that's why you were ahead of your time. You did it. Shaka Zulu. You know what I mean? I came early for y'all to do uh, work at another time. Now, um, I see you. Uh, um, I don't want to forget this question. My man Ken Cook's in the house, and he said, talk about meditations and rituals we can use for music, hip-hop, to tap into the spirit world. So we get to that, but, you know, I wanted you to finish you know, your thought as well, brother. Oh yeah, yeah. Good luck. Yeah, I was just um, I wanted to, to um take it back to the music right quick, and um, okay. you know what I'm saying shout you out because it's like, you know, it's deep how the music kind of plays into um, you know what we build on and and mm-hmm. um the aspects of the spirituality and everything, and mm-hmm. um, like I see how like they um, it, it's kind of crazy how like they the way they've uh, engineered this thing to where, like, like nobody, there's no adults, you know, doing the music now. It's all, the, all, all kids and everything. And, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like that's how they're trying to um, keep the mentality of everybody uh-huh. at a youthful level with them putting up, or I guess you could say suppressing, like, you know, more adult uh, and mature, like, uh, artists and everything. Well, well, I would tell you this. Now, you got to remember that music, rap music even then was an a, a, a art form of the children. It was a voice of the children, but it was a voice of some, some, some uh, uh, oppressed children. Now, uh, I guess the voice, uh, now when I say voice of oppressed, not just that we were oppressed and on the street and didn't have nothing, more that our mouths were stifled. For instance, um, before rap music, you could count on your hands uh, black people that you know. Now, there was always the grown movie star Shaft and Fred Williamson. That's why we follow, even to these days, those, still, those, those iconic images. But that young black voice, I remember the before and after, and I'm sure Lee does too. And before, you was the nigga who was, you was the chain-snatching pocketbook dude. There was no voice for you. You only had Todd Bridges and J.J. from Good Times, you get what I'm saying? And they were acting. It wasn't the real them. So now when rap came along, it was one of the most dangerous forms um, to ever hit because it was 
the direct voice of black youth who had never in history had a voice. So we as kids were still more responsible because because we didn't have a voice and because we didn't together, we had a lot of creative energy. Rapping, break dancing, slang and dress the way we dress, dance graffiti, you name it. There was so much creative energy that was un so as kids who needed to express themselves, you 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 uh, uh, what you did was show the unfolding of a mind that just had no voice here. This that was the biggest deal about rap. It was the the stifled energy that finally found a medium and it and it became itself. Now with this you were authenticated by only shit that happened in the hood. For instance, Public Enemy can do a show with Biz Markey on the same night, and the same the audience would 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 dance and sing and clap just as much. Today, Fifty Cent could not do a show with Most Deaf. They're Most Deaf people, and then there's Fifty Cent people, which means you've been subjugated. They separated your mind again. That alone is the corru- is, is corruption, because. You were authenticated by if you ask them to say, but so by the time the West Coast came in, they were imitating us at first, and they were doing a bad version. The be- the first West Coast record to break through was uh, the Formula by um, the Doc, because Dre had a very grasp on how to communicate um, with uh, uh, with us. All that uh, DJ Quick, Short Dog, none of that shit was kicking. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. A couple of people got with it because it didn't represent our mind, and we ran it at that point. But when NWA came out, it didn't have to represent New York. It represented the best of what it is they were. And it was authenticated because now we were starting to tell a story because, again, this was all about black voices who had no voice voicing themselves. You get what I'm saying? So straight out of Compton, all that shit was working because they – that's, I didn't know what the fuck was going on in L.A., anywhere, until them niggas came. I was like, they wearing jerry curls and this and that. So when Hammer came, we realized it was performance and everybody turned the, under the theme that you went pop. But it actually was, you're not authenticated because there's nobody black with that voice doing that bullshit. So Hammer's answer was, well, I'm an entertainer, not a, uh, you know, not a rapper. That's, that's how he was trying to get off the hook. So we it was a, it, it's totally a kid movement. Sometime when I'm not uh, 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 in uh, uh, feeling emotional about it, I listen to some of the old rap. I grew up going that shit was corny. The Lancy Street, you know, <laughs> nightmares of the night. You know, <laughs> so I'm sitting there like if you if you don't attach your memory and your childhood to it, some of that shit is like a little bit redundant. You know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> Sandy, Sandy D, and all this shit. Uh, the da ha da ha. Mm-hmm. Right, rap and do. Remember when rap and do came back? You know, I'm back. Whoa, he gave you a long whoa. Oh, that's Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin, let me rock ya. All that shit was like novelty. So yeah, this <laughs> is some funny shit. <laughs> this is the rap and do. I forgot all about this nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Did somebody do a John Wayne rap too at one point? <laughs> They, they, yeah. they rapping, remember rapping Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield made a rap. See, they really oh, thought they had so much disregard for you. They really thought this shit was just one. Uh, uh, this shit would just be a minute. You get what I'm saying? See, for if, for instance, Sugar Hill Gang was the first big commercial record, but then they said, you know, something. Don't just talk about dumb shit. You know, I got a swimming pool in a mansion. Five body garden, you know, with a with a pickle on every sandwich. See, that shit is dumb. What fucked them up was the message. Uh, the, the message. That was the next one. When they did that shit, it was. It, it you have a message in this shit now. You are yeah. reflecting your. See, remember, it was they were scared of that voice that has been stifled by these young black kids. Even young, even black men had more of a voice. You can see a black news, you know, if they pull themselves up by their bootstraps and made something of themselves. You see, like, you know, black news reporters here and there. There was nothing for young black youth but Todd Bridges, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, and Michael, you know what I'm saying? Michael for good time. So, like, so <laughs> this, this was a scary thing now. 
This was a scary thing. See, we, we sit around, we think, we don't know the side. We think, well, when they put us on MTV, that, that's us making strides. No, they were trying to absorb us, so we got forgotten in that. But what, what, what fucked up was white people liked it. You get what I'm saying? White kids liked it. They thought it would just be this, this come and go fad. So whatever they cannot fight, they try to make a fad. For instance, that Atkins diet, if you read the book, dude, that fucking diet works. But I, and I read the book before I even knew about it. I've seen a 300-pound man shrink, quit his job, move to California, and lift weights, and had a new woman. And this nigga was one of the dudes who, at the rock label used to come to work with, one, you know, he only had two shirts type dude. So I said, what is this? This is before it got popular again. I said, what the fuck is that? He's like, yeah, I'm eating steaks and eggs. I'm reading this shit, did it, and that shit works. Then I seen after reading the actual information, he's like, weight loss is a side effect. You'll lose diabetes, smoking, cancer, high blood pressure. The, a, a total laundry list of you getting off of this over-refined carbs, this regular diet. Then I see the news media hit and attack this shit with so much false information, and on the other side, they made it a fad. You could buy Atkins bars and low-carb Intamins, and when the fad was over, because nobody read how to do it, they, it totally was in and out. So whatever they're trying to get rid of, if you can't beat them, they join them, make it overexposed, shut it down. So by the time MTV came in, they were trying to overexpose it. Dr. Dre giving you the, so they thinking you would, it would go away. You get what I'm saying? Because BET was the other side doing it. So they knew they had a, so they was trying to go against BET and then get it to be absorbed and disappeared. But rock music was over because that was some shit they were still eating off for 30 years later after fucking Jimi Hendrix. So now they needed something new. You get what I'm saying? So this voice, it was the voice of children. Now, the difference is now, um, it's the voice that business execs want our children to have. You get what I'm saying? Right. They, it, was, it was constantly uh, about money. So if, and who's not going to need or want money? You get what I'm saying? So once they got that over to the Wheezies and the rest of these idiots, it's, it's, it, it, it is repro- it's the most dangerous shit. It's reprogramming these, these – they got some programmed children to reprogram other children. So it's no longer the voice of our youth, but it's the voice of business. They are walking billboards. And it doesn't even start with Weezy and you know. them. Foxy Brown made a whole fucking song about Burberry, some shit that's been around for a gazillion years. Nobody was wearing it. That group with Omarion, they did one video in that. Foxy Brown made a Burberry song, got paid for it, and now all these niggas walking around with some Burberry shit on. Niggas is walking advertisement. Once they did that, for, they said Hennessy was almost going broke before niggas started getting their Henny on. Pulled them out of obscurity. So we, we, you got to remember, everything is here, hip-hop, everything is here to raise. This, this is, this, America is a factory. That when we were creative and the, create, the creativity dictated that this thing could be on our own terms. Our answer to it being on our ter- own terms was like, I'm not going pop. Because going pop means I'm going popular music and I'm a puppet for, for the industry. So Wheezy, all of them niggas, guess what? They're pop. They're the most popular shit. <laughs> they went pop on your ass. That was always the agenda of the music, not to be your, the voice of the people. Remember that whole statement, Chuck B? Uh, we're the voice of the people, listening to rappers like CNN, but reporting this, that, the other. That's over. They're the, they are the uh, voice of the financial uh, stability, the, the, the endless mind control of you spending and them reaping and you remaining poor. They are the voice of that now. So they are the children's voice to talk to other children about 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 just more of their mind control. But it but that's the biggest thing with rap. It was us. It was us talking. LL Cool J is is a master not just for the rhymes and the good songs he gave us. He was 100% the lonely B-boy reflection of everybody. Everybody it, it it worked so much because every nigga hated him. You get what I'm saying? Which means they seen something in him cuz we hated ourselves. You get what I'm saying? So every nigga was always trying to take his chain, and he fucked up the game making 
watch our love unfurl. Because that's when it's fun. That's when he had all the chicks. That was the ultimate dream of a b boy. And he he did. No matter what you think about it, he represented that shit well because it was the ultimate reflection of what New York dudes were. You get what I'm saying? No, hundred percent. So so <laughs> no. It, let me go right. to the line right quick. We got um, right. area code 810, area code 810. You on the air? 810. What's going on? Peace, Dr. Eileen. Peace, God. Peace, brother. Peace, brother. Peace. Yeah. Some, some brother Panic? Yes, yeah, sir. Yo, no doubt. Yeah. Um, I mean, just really, I've been, uh, first and foremost, uh, I kind of wanted to hear what uh, you were going to answer as far as um, King Cook's question. And I mean, okay. usually I've been listening to this for a while. Usually you end up answering my questions just for listening, so I don't end up having to ask nothing. But, but, uh, uh-huh. but I mean, if there's something else that I can expand on after that, then that would be cool. But yeah, I did want to hear the answer to that. Okay, uh, um, King Cook, what was his question? I didn't write it down. Um, it was rituals uh, said, oh, and meditation. Meditation. Mm-hmm. meditation is on it, right? Med- rituals and meditation. Really, uh, King Cook, from his age, King Cook is 23, he missed out on getting re- really uh, the benefits from it because he grew up um, in this music form. Now, see, see, what I've talked to King Cook, people his age, not just him, because rap now has the remnants of this energy. Now, he can listen to old music. You know, he jokes all the time, yo, y'all old slaves. This old music ain't here. You know what I mean? You know, he listens to some and, and all that, but it's his age. If he, It's not even the quality of the music. The energy and the spiritual energy of the goddamn music at that time is it, unmatched. It's unmatched because it is unmatched because there was nothing that we turned into something on our terms. So you, it, it, it's not even, I like as one but I like MC shit. That was all a side effect. The fact that they exist to even have that battle and we had to, we commanded attention of America, when y'all do that hot shit, you get what I'm saying, then y'all got something to meditate about. So for the OGs, uh, I would say you get, you, that's the easiest thing, get into that zone, you get what I'm saying, whatever you like. So, but but I'll medi- if I was going to get into a meditated zone, um, I use one one album as opposed to my, my playlist. I remember I didn't sleep for two days around the Super Lover C thing, and was I didn't know it was meditation. I listened to goddamn um, Follow the Leader by by Rock Kim with the long ass strings in it. Yeah. To this yeah. day, I've never matched a deeper meditation than that. No I information, did. but I was totally going out my body and could yeah. not explain it. Not sleep. I was just going. I don't even know where I was. So you can get in the zones with the drums and the beat. But for, for the most part with rap music, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a feeling for your youth. Um, it will, uh, 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 you can get into that zone, and it's more healing for me. Now, um, I, see, if you grew up during that era, with anything from that era, from your childhood, if you meditate on it and go back to your childhood when you were youthful, healthy, healthy, you felt potential, exuberant, the world was ahead of you, you, you if you can recreate those feelings while you listen to something from that era, from your childhood era, that's the best meditation that I've gotten out of rap thus far. I can take myself back there and not only uh, any form of depression, you know, because now you're paying rent. That alone is depressing. You get what I'm saying? As soon as that electric bill comes. So to get into these zones. Now, for King Cook, because he likes this music, not to say him, but for that, they can get into zones. The, the sad thing is, what are these rappers talking about? Nothing but money. I would, Me personally, I wouldn't want to meditate to somebody just talking about money. You get what I'm saying? Now, you would say, well, the Sugar Hill Gang say I got five cars, three mansions, a yacht. The feeling was it's a fantasy. You get what I'm saying? So why do you think the record companies gave these people this shit? Because they're thinking on a narrow level, okay, if that's what these rappers are talking about, i got so many girls, i got so many cars. We talking about before Mace. We talking about the fantasy rappers rocking it. You get what I'm saying? I got so what, if, what would happen if we give them this? Then they wouldn't have no point. 
this is what they did. Not recently with Dace. We're talking about when we was doing all that Super Lover C shit, we would go to L.A. on tour, Kid Quick, uh, uh, Too Short, uh, Ice-T. Them niggas had houses on the sides of hills and shit like that. Uh, 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 these gangster rappers. When we would go back to New York, we were still living with our moms. You get what I'm saying? Pun did an sh- uh, 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 interview on New York One. At one point, he was at his mom's crib eating McDonald's off a TV tray with Benz's beamers downstairs. I was like, wow, and this is pun. You get what I'm saying? So, so one of their remedies for getting control was like, if y'all think it's like I got three mansions and a Cadillac and five Benz's, and you, we're saying this in a fun way, it was a more uh, dreaming way, a way of the good life that we knew we deserved, but we still at that point didn't see that as a reality. I got mansions and swimming pools. Record companies made that a reality for you so you could be pointless in your story. And that, or your, now that you had it as a reality, the worst thing you could do is give the nigga the money he wants. You get what I'm saying? You know, Bobby Hemmings said something interesting. Y'all talking about Michael Jackson thinking he's crazy. He just got the money to do the shit y'all, y'all, y'all want to do but can't do because half y'all niggas think y'all white anyway. He just had the money to do it. You get what I'm saying? So, so inundating us with that money, even though people were going for the money, inundating it and making it popular to talk about that was another way of shutting it down. So by the time you, let's say you get up with, with Nelly, Nelly ain't talking about shit but money. He ain't talking about nothing that I would want to meditate to. You get what I'm saying? The best thing I would do for, for, for that is get into the instrumentals with them, or unless they say something that has some form of merit. Remember, when you close your eyes and go into meditation, you shut down the conscious mind and open up your subconscious mind. And they're spitting poison. You, there's poison that's conscious. So imagine what they do to the subconscious. You let it, It's already entering your subconscious. That's what a drum beat and repetition does. So it, this is, we're being programmed. All music is programming. That's why it was supposed to be so up. That's the idea of music as it being a, 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 a subject that's supposed to be uplifting. Anything repetitious is programming you. How many times do you say, I hated that song, but they played it on the radio so much, you driving down the street going, live in the vida loca, or, or margarina, margarina, ha, huh, huh, margarina, saying all that dumb shit. You get what I'm saying? Because you program with that shit. You get what I'm saying? Slide to the left. Slide to the right. You singing all this dumb shit that you hate and don't do because you are under mind control. How many times have your parents said to you, if you know your schoolwork, like you knew that fucking song, we be all right. You didn't say because it is programming you. So you hear this shit not knowing it, you becoming hungry, starved, greedy, just for fucking money. Some greedy, low thought motherfuckers just off of that new shit. Not because it's good versus bad, because they ain't saying nothing of any merit to anybody. Even if you were saying that shit to me in my living room, not even rapping it, I, get the fuck out, yo. Who wants to hear you talk about some shit all day? Yeah, kid, I'm getting money in, man. That's fucking arrogant. You get what I'm saying? Arrogant. Started with not just Nelly and Down South, Puff Daddy and Mace. Biggie was the first one to introduce Jay-Z's to. Biggie introduced it, but you had a feeling of him. He was, he was regurgitating every dream. That right. every Negro has, you know what I'm saying? It was but a pathway. It. it was all a dream. Right, it was all a dream, right? And, and he also told you more money, more problems. He, you get what I'm saying? So, Well, let's give so, a ritual. Let's give a ritual, God, because Venus is in Taurus, and it ain't no coincidence that you're on the site, you know, and then mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. that deals with love. So what we can do, family, is go out and, and check out the sky. Everybody's been asking us to, you know. Check out the mm-hmm, sky, mm-hmm. garb yourself in gold light, and visualize how much you love yourself or, or love things or whatever. Let's manifest a change because we got Nicki Minaj's and, you know, rocking that whole vibration, you know. Mm-hmm. So doing rituals on stage, so let us do our rituals but from a godly vibration. And our stuff is way more powerful than theirs. Oh, no know? doubt. Like, um, you know, that's, that's, that's the national anthem here. You know what I mean? All rituals. We should. I must. We're not saying that because I'm assuming that we're doing that shit anyway. You get what I'm saying? I'm assuming that some way, if you are here tonight, all that shit did not work on us. The ones that's listening, and it's. And I find more and more people listening, which means all that Nicki Minaj shit ain't working. Is is what we're talking about? Is it's been manipulated in us because that voice that we originally created, that voice that needs to come out, that energy that needed to come out that eventually became rap music, it still needs to come out. 
It actually needed to come out in another form for people who are Sean Zanes because rap has been passed. See, is see, um, usually it was jazz. Then your then 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 your 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 parents listen to let's just, your great grandparents listen to blues. The, the next generation listened to jazz and cursed out the blues. The next generation listened to uh, doo wop and cursed out jazz. Then the next generation listened to disco and cursed out doo wop. And then so so, you, but but it was different music forms. And and now you listen to all that, be like it's great or 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 it's acceptable or whatever. But the formula was still about love, still about talent, and still about energy. It wasn't totally hoard out. It wasn't totally pimped out. Right. And it, and you know, so even if you didn't like the music form, you at least say, "I don't like it, but I get it." You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, now, so with, with, oh, what what the industry did was because it was primarily a child's art. You get what I'm saying? Every, in fact, if you was 20, you were too old to rap. When if you were 25, you made a perfect singer. You know what I'm saying? So you were dealing with a whole bunch of kids, but I'm surprised it took this long to bring it way down the road. So if if it would have just died a, a, a brilliant death, if it would have left on a semi-high note, you get what I'm saying? I would even go as far as Puffy. If, if it would have if it would have died out with Puffy, it would have forced that voice to come out again in the younger kids. You get what I'm saying? And you would have heard something new, a new form of talent. Now, but that's okay because when it, death, death, or what we're calling death, is is for a new renewal. So, so our rituals are working, in fact, because that's why that shit is dead. You know, there's two levels to this: the level of what's happening in 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 a in a in a conscious way, the conscious attack. But the metaphysical side of it is the shit is working. That's why it's dead because we took the creativity back out of it, and what you got is some shit that's running on empty while we wait for the true rise, the true, the true, the true light and the true transformation and all of that stuff we've been working and talking for is happening. It, 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 if the creativity was still happening here, there's other things. That's why there's no black heavyweight champion anymore because right. we're, we're, we're out of here. Our attention is somewhere else. There's no more. We're, we're talking about even when rap came, you, you, you were scraping the barrel then in terms of creativity, because we have done everything there is to do down here on the metaphysical oh. side. So, so as, as people who are studying, people who know who Brother Aleem is and people who are dealing with Brother Aleem, they better be meditating already, or they have no fucking business here. You get what I'm saying? If they know who I am, they better be, they better be meditating or if they got no business here. You get what I'm saying? That's, 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 that's most necessary. You get what I'm saying? But you know, you got young. Yeah, I've seen young people still balancing with this because that voice is being no longer uh, uh, their creative voice is no longer there. But they but that, but they see this black voice that they were born into, and their mind in, their mind control into this degraded thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, like you, if you eating clone strawberries all your life, somebody hand you a real strawberry. It's hard for. Uh, even to me now, I'll eat organic food going, wow, this is different, and it's a little bit harder. You know what I mean? I miss the chemicals. You get what I'm saying? If you were born and raised on it. So usually you'll find them in conflict with guys who've seen this stuff raised from the ground, knew what it was before it became this. You get what I'm saying? Right. right. I, I'd never like KRS-One. Classically, from a mundane standpoint, I'm from Queensbridge. He made a song called The Bridge Is Over. But I will tell you this. Nelly has no fucking business attacking KRS One. Right. From no, there's there's no way you can justify that bullshit. Nas from Queensbridge said, "Now this shit is ridiculous. Now it's ridiculous." Nelly going at KRS One. You just don't do that. You just wouldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yep. it's like you know what I'm saying? It's, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like a nigga who sweeps the stadium, go and punch Mike Tyson in the face, and go, "What up now?" You like that don't even make no sense. Now I want to. Now I, that's a boxing match. I don't even want to see. You get what I'm saying? So the mere fact that people want to see that, I see the young people are stand. They more stand up for the fact is now these old rappers represent their parents. So it's like their parents telling you, "Look, boy, I used to do this before." And they sit there going, eh, "Yeah, but we rich now." I'm like, "No, that's still part of your mind control, dog." You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't know. So no, yeah. 
Rituals, I think like Aline's queen just said, that's an excellent one. See yourself as golden because um, it is programming you, but to be aware of uh, repetition and programming and all the rest of that kind of shit um, uh, uh, is fighting it. Once you make it, once you bring it to your conscious mind, you then have your conscious mind you, you, uh, can also block this programming, you get what I'm saying, to understand it. Somebody also asked in the chat room about tattoos. Tattoos, um, excellent. Now there's all these tattoos because these niggas are without the, their program to be subconscious billboards now. You get what I'm saying? It's just a matter of time before you start seeing Coca-Cola tattoos. McDonald's has a free Happy Meal on Tuesday tattoos on these niggas' chests because they're walking advertisement. They have totally, utterly became a reflection of everything these record companies have ever wanted. I remember being there and fighting against that same shit. They have totally become an absolute hollow, pimped out record business whore telling you it's about money. So pe- so your little kids could buy their records thinking they're going to get rich because they got a Nelly album. See, I even see my stepson, their inspiration is this shit. And it's because it, it entangles everybody's dreams. You know, I want to be rich. You're young. What's the first thing you say? I want to be rich. I want to get some money. I want to look good. I want to have clothes, have girls, wear the hot shit. So when they listen to Nelly, and I don't even, he's not hot no more. When they listen to uh, 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 all that Wheezy and Nicki Minaj shit, what they're looking at is is their dreams now. Because it's, it's, it's such an easy layup. You know what I'm saying? It's such an easy layup. Just like someone showing their breasts and saying, "Now are you interested?" Who? What man is going to say, "No, I'm not interested." You sold your breast. That's 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 cheap, uncreative, and easy. You, you know what I mean? A, 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 a cop out. So for these dudes to say something that even challenges your thoughts is out of the question. They're going to you easy. You get what I'm saying? I can get dancing in my Air Force Ones. Who gives a fuck about that? Meaningless. But oh, but see, songs like that means something if you have a more holistic approach to, to, look, give me something, you know what I'm saying, Nas, I know I can be, but I, that was a hit in this day and time. When people were saying songs were falling off, and it, let me tell you, it was a, it, uh, this conscious music is falling off. The Fugees came and shut all that down. It can work because that is something in you. All these young kids who still listen to that and still listen to me means that consciousness is in you. So they would accept it if it's done right. But there's a purposeful effort to shut shit like the Fugees down. When the Fugees come up, they sit around and go, oh, God, this is out of con- this, We're fucking up again. You got to understand what this was. In rap music, you could have Dana Dane doing nightmares, but he still would have an African piece on. Slick Rick has an African. They, each rapper, no matter what subject, how lighthearted or heavy they was, that one of the best groups, to hit the planet was motherfucking X Clan, the first song that was played here. Who I knew personally, Lamuma Carson, Sonny Carson's son was Professor X, Brother J, um, um, uh, Sugar Shaft was the DJ and was a personal friend, and he's dead now. He's in Paradise. He was on Facebook fighting for a lot of causes. Personal friend. He was both him and Lamuda used to promote shows at the Latin quarters. They were the ones who used to bring the rappers in, and eventually did it. They talked about onks. They was the most dangerous group because they showed you onks. They had chicks named ISIS. They talked about leg bars, them and y'all. Nobody was doing that. Public Nobody. enemy wasn't even as dangerous because really? they already knew how to handle militant rap groups. You get what I'm saying? They know how to handle militancy. They know how to deal with that. So they, so that's something that they could see how far that could go. They never, you never, you never seen Brother J. He had hits. Hits, just as much hits as the rest of these niggas I see down with OPP. You never see them on BET bringing back, you know what I'm saying, Funkin' Lessons and all the rest of that because they were the most dangerous rap group at, in the A. I've never even heard of a motherfucking ISIS in a, in, a, in, a, in a queen mother earth and all of that shit and to the east and all that. I've never even heard of that shit in 1987, Shit, I was trying to find out what this new thong shit is all about. You know what I'm saying? At that time. So so it was dangerous. It was very dangerous music. Always, always seeking a form to control it. Vanilla Ice was a form of control. 
You know what I'm saying? They gave you and raised up hammer to degrade it, but tried to hurry up too too soon to give you vanilla ice. It was a slow, steady walk. The same thing they did with Elvis. They took Chuck Berry and gave you Pat Boone, going, good golly, Miss Marley, sure likes to moan. Doing that shit off of Little Richard. You know, real shit. You get what I'm saying? And they this is, <clears throat> this is what Elvis is. You get what I'm saying? So they did it with Vanilla Ice, but rap was too strong. It was our voice. We shut that shit down. And I tell you, it was spiritual what shut Hammer and Vanilla Ice down. Another white group called um, Third Base, MC Search. I knew MC Search well from um, Latin Quarters. He was in there with the fights with the niggas. 100. He deserved what he got. I, that other Pete Rock dude, I don't know what the fuck that was all about. Uh, Pete Nice or whatever the fuck his name was with the cane. But Search was a real white nigga, you know what I'm saying? And um and and so he shut it down. So rap was impenetrable. They got some niggas like Dr. Dre. Listen to Dr. Dre. You know what I'm saying? At um um Death Row. What he did was raise up Suge Knight. Suge Knight did all of that shit they were talking about as gangsters, made it real. Made it fucking real. Started throwing niggas off balconies at classic conventions. Jack the rapper, I think it was in Detroit. Jack the Rapper, this old goddamn man that started this music convention. They throwing niggas off balconies. My man, um, Tupac's man, I, this dude went to school with me. I uh, can't remember his name. He got killed. Uh, tall, dark skin dude. They say it all the time. He got killed. That's when niggas were starting to get really killed. All because of Suge Knight. After, after Biggie and Tupac, Death Row folded, and it's called Aftermath. Aftermath, what did they give you? Eminem. Jesus. Eminem shit. Eminem had a group called D12, 12 Disciples. They ain't playing it with the, exactly what the fuck they doing. He was coming as a Jesus figure to save your asses in rap. And we did rituals and made his ass go crazy. You don't believe me? I got them shits up on YouTube right now. From, from the early 2000s, me out in his ass in front in Shabbat. Right now, the, the, the little joke video I put up called Brother Panic Goes Crazy. And everybody clicking on that shit thinking you're gossip mongers thinking that something was going to happen, and I'm breaking down shit, showing you all of Eminem's work where he's throwing up pyramids, putting his head in pyramids, doing all of this shit, and going right. through them. This ain't nothing new with Illuminati and all, all that shit. Is fair. At this point, you calling Jay-Z the Illuminati is helping him sell records. One time, Jay-Z was a new Wabian. You get what I'm saying? Um, uh, Jazzo is conscious, the one who brought him out. Jazzo's in Atlanta. Jazzo's people. We and Jazzo sat in lectures together. You get what I'm saying? Right, me participated too. in shit. They, right, but you were there. Yeah, Lean was there. Lean knows. So Jazz O put Jay-Z on the consciousness. Uh, right. uh, them niggas were straight in the wobby. Jay-Z ain't stupid. He <laughs> knows. And took me And he shit. said, Jay-Z, yeah. Yeah, Jay-Z once said, look, come on. And, and, and he said, look, come on, y'all. Illuminati. So I'm a poor black kid from Brooklyn. That don't even make sense. He knows more about the Illuminati than you. The only thing this rumor got started with is because he's Rockefeller Records. And when this comes up, as a matter of fact, I tell niggas, y'all need to contact Aleem and look at his tape on the 13 Illuminati family if y'all want to catch up to speed on what that shit really is. You can't just wake up. It's the 13 bloodline. Look, matter of fact, I know it leaves us that tape. Y'all, if y'all really want to learn some Illuminati shit about the, how it's set up, what it is, and how Jay-Z cannot be in the fucking Illuminati, get a Leem's tape. The 13, uh, fa- what's the name of that tape, bro? Um, the 13 um, Illuminati, um, Illuminati Blood Clans. Right. Excellent tape. Excellent tape. It break, breaks down all the 13 families, Reynolds Rap, got them Rockefeller Kennedys, the uh the that Prince Charles and them, the 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 Lees, I believe, in, in the Chinese breaks all that shit down. That was one of the most informative videos. Oh uh, I said, Okay, that's the structure. I'm like, shit, if y'all wanna be scared if we're gonna play this game, y'all better think about the Bilderberg. I don't never hear niggas talking about that shit. You know what I'm saying? So so Jay Z can't be. It's not even conducive. Can he be in a secret society? Hell yeah, by now. You know what I'm saying? But who cares? You get what I'm saying? And it's, it, not to mention the stuff you can't do nothing about. But he's not stupid. At this point, he's selling records doing that. You get what I'm saying? He's selling records doing that. So, I mean, I would let you think, I'm whatever. You got a 45-year-old nigga still selling you records, laughing like a child. Ha, ha, nigga. I got, and all he did was talk about his watch and how much drugs he used to sell. A whole career on dry snitching on his own self 
and we still even having this conversation. That's the game. And even if they did pledge this undying allegiance to Baphomet, ain't that what we're trying to do any fucking way? You know what I'm saying? I'd be like, <laughs> shit, if he's dealing with Baphomet, and this nigga got this career going, y'all niggas should not walk. You should run the Baphomet. You get what I'm saying? You could really get something done here. You get what I'm saying? Like the queen just said, we got more powerful energy than any of them. But we worried about if this is so and turning records backwards. They got a whole, a whole pantheon of records on YouTube that they play backwards. Beyonce got mad backwards records. And then she's going, man, I love Satan. Man, I love Satan. See, she loves Satan. It's like, come on, man, what the fuck? Even if she did, it's just a polarity. It's just as bad as loving Jesus. You get what I'm saying? In that context, there's nothing but a polarity in the energy understanding, a process of darkness to light, just the methodology of going into subconscious and coming out. As conscious people, it shouldn't be on our mind. We should be teaching our kids that. We should be saying, well, y'all, to the kids, y'all need to listen to some Beyonce backwards records. So, you know, that's the lesson for the day. Uh, Daddy, I love Satan. You got that right. It's nothing but a process. You get what I'm saying? It's not a big deal. So so we're putting more mystique into this music, and I'm going to tell you why. Because there is no more mystique in this music. It is straight up a Twinkie. It is a, it is a business corporation bitch. Straight out. So we have this need because we feel it's ours to add more mystery to some shit that's not mysterious. The only thing this shit is about is selling records. And if you think he's the Illuminati or if you think he's fucking really Superman, then that's what he'll be because it keeps you interested. That is, that is a tactic in any form of entertainment 101. The master at that shit is Madonna. Always been the master. First First, second record, like a virgin. Touch for the very first time. This shit, this shit tore the house down with controversy. Then, then like a prayer, putting Leon, the actor, in dance. that video as Jesus. It, right. They went crazy. This was all the hype. Justify my love. Her kissing some white, other white girls. But her movies, jumping in the bed with all her black dancers going, ooh, what's that lump? You get what I'm saying? So it's all, this, this has always been the methodology. Britney Spears about, tried it and failed. Hold on, hold on. Since you're talking about hip-hop, about Kane mm-hmm. supposedly sexing Madonna or being in her book at that time period, too. Yeah, yeah, Kane. Yeah, Kane was a freak of Zoid. He took them naked pictures, like, that shit with that song on. He posed for Playboy. Like, to this day, I, ain't forgot, I, I haven't forgot or forgiven that. Oh, um, but yeah. Grandmaster D from Houdini. You told me he used to tear her ass up. Mm. The Grandmaster D from Houdini, this nigga was a nasty nigga. You know, this nigga was the nigga that'd get on the table and take his dick out. He was that nigga. You know what I'm saying? And you know, <laughs> you know that he was notorious for shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And right, right. you know, uh, yeah, it was known. He said he broke her fucking back out. And this is when she was on the uprise. Now it's probably some embarrassing shit to say. You get what I'm saying? Right, but, right. But, you know, this, is, this has always been the trick. I'm sure Jay-Z knows about this controversy. Rap, they, I mean, you should, I remember the, the straight, you know, this nigga you know, saying, if, I'm uh-huh. in the industry and keeping them, you know, um, keep, keeping the youth, you know, um, looking at them. So, yeah. No yeah. This, this, this is just to keep you interested. She is a nothing thing. You get what I'm saying? A nothing thing. So just to keep you interested in her, she's at the, she's at the fucking Super Bowl doing Baphomet rituals, and you took that bait. You get what I'm saying? You took that bait. So, you know, and I've spoke about that already, but knowing the music business and shit, just knowing Madonna, you know what I'm saying? She's constantly trying to do that. You know what I'm saying? Constantly stealing from us. The Vogue was an underground gay dance, just as much as breakdancing as graffiti was. No one knew about that, but... But but club owners, DJs, and whole mo's. She made a whole song with Vogue, and and people thought this was the new sensation that she created. But there's a gay dude called Willie Ninja that showed her how to do it. You get what I'm saying? He was a Vogue dude, gay dude, Vogue. So she's always been eating off of us. Britney Spears, Black Spears, this is nothing new. So they don't know nothing that you don't know. And whatever they think they know that you don't know is only the study of you. So all that Illuminati that Jay-Z is doing, so what if he is? Like, it really don't affect you. Let's even say he's the Illuminati and he, he's the worst of the Illuminati. 
Nothing right. he does affects you. If let me Beyonce, ask you, because uh-huh. this, this, let me ask you this question because this is a question which that um, I'm sure um, is going to come up before um, um, before mm-hmm. um, it's over. Um, what do you think about the um, was there a Santana ritual concerning Madonna in the Super Bowl, uh, Whitney Houston death, uh, uh-huh. um, all of that? You know, no, I've talked in detail about it, like. Um, you know, what I don't like, let's say, uh, first of all, we, you know, this is one of my core things I talk about when, we, when we're doing these, you know, serious lectures, more than something that, you know, we like to talk about and add the metaphysics to it, is that every, what I do notice is every single black person that dies, we give the credit to white people. You get what I'm saying? And, and you know, so it's, it's, a, it's really it's a part of Willie Lynch, you know what I mean? Like, since when... You know, and this is why I'm talking about Madonna and what she is as nothing more than a, a an attention whore. Uh, we won't even go into that. I talked to Whitney straight out. You get what I'm saying? We won't even go into that. I won't even ask you to believe me. We just use some logic. Um, you know, whenever anyone black dies, it becomes this conspiracy. It, it becomes something the white man did. But if you really get past all the core of that, that's because we still think white people are our masters, and everything that happens on this planet is in control of them. We, um, that someone, can, no one can die on their own terms. There's, there's about 35 black women who died in the goddamn tub this weekend who could sing better, uh, who could sing just as good or better than Whitney if this is just about energy. You get what I'm saying? Whitney has done drugs for the last <laughs> Damn near twenty years now, you know ten, you know twenty years now, you know what I mean? Um, come on, yeah, huh? Yeah, for twenty years. So, but I mean, I mean, so me, I'm not. I, I mean, even if somebody showed me straight up unphotoshopped pictures of Madonna choking Whitney Houston, I'll say I'm still going to say so. What she did us a favor because she released Whitney from the from her suffering, and now our power resides on the other side, shit we can tap into, the power that is with us. You know, I spoke about how all of these so-called, well, talents, these masterful talents, these voices, these Rick James, Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, they're nothing but some of our most powerful energy trapped in human form. It can only express themselves through these mediums, comedian and singer and Jimi Hendrix, the guitar player. When these energies release from the body and become cosmic where we all have access to that vibration, that's a problem. So if let's, I'll go as far as let's say Madonna did it personally. I want to give her a thank you for releasing one of these powerful dark goddesses as Whitney. Now, I've talked to Whitney. There's no such a thing as that. You got, we just got to remember Madonna is more of a subject to us because we grew up with it. But know what Madonna is? Britney Spears. You get what I'm saying? And we would, if Britney Spears was doing that, we wouldn't even think twice because we were grown when she came out. We know she's just a dumb, dilly white girl, Lindsay Lohan. That's all Madonna was. She just preceded them. Now, um, Madonna does know Kabbalah. Madonna does know that. But what power could she wield that we, you know, it's just, it's just all, it's too much of us just saying they have this power to do these things at will and whenever they want. Now, what I do notice about ritual is they'll set up energy for certain things. So it would be above Madonna's head. You get what I'm saying? If you see some, the Super Bowl itself, and, and that is actually a, rigid, a, a ritual to the goddess Brigitte, or Bridget, um, the Celtic goddess. Actually. So, God, why did they do the Marilyn Monroe thing? Um, where at? Well, well All of the Marilyn, mm, because Marilyn Monroe um, is what they call a screen goddess. So um, Anna Nicole was the the perfect example of that. When Marilyn Monroe, and I'm sure she was killed, but she died young. Therefore, when you see her on the screen, it's the eternal life that they cannot have that you have. So when they build up these screen goddesses, especially in this icon of Marilyn Monroe, what they're doing is showing you a goddess that lives forever. It starts to program their psyche. So when they did it with Anna Nicole, the second coming of Marilyn Monroe, and she was killed too, um, 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 but they took her out the spotlight when she became fat. 
because she see that's why they're rich. That's why I know Madonna and whatever they do is not that sophisticated because the rituals they're trying to do when I do catch them are very mundane, very easy, easily decoded. So what they're trying to do is create on your cycle this never ending thing. That's why Bobby's talked about this. Like when Johnny Carson is sick, they took him off the air because you have to see him healthy for him to become this icon. And when he died, niggas like I thought he was dead. For, for all these years, you get what I'm saying? Um, Rock Hus- Hudson, you know, uh, uh, they take them off early when they get sick and right before they die because their biggest power is the TV because we know this is just a matrix of sound and light. And if this is a matrix of sound and light, a smaller matrix is the television or the movie, especially the movie because in the movie – you go into a dark room with sound all around you and light in front of you. That is the that is the criteria for hypnosis. So, And then you go in there with suspension of disbelief, meaning what you would normally disbelieve, you suspend it. You go there to see Neo fly, to throw people three houses long, to pick up a truck. So you are in the perfect, thing, a perfect way to be hypnotized. And even the Dogon says, Anything that's imaginary is just as real as what you're calling real. So this imaginary thing, that's the idea of the stereotype in movies. Those are the rituals. Those are the rituals to really watch out for because that's the repetition. The word ritual is synonymous, is, is stereotype. So we would say they're stereotyping. The black guy always gets killed. The black woman is always doing this or saying the whole, or, don't go there and I don't need no man incidentally, which is one of the goals of the Willie Lynch document for her to become independent. You got Beyonce singing independent woman and get your shit all the time. That is a Willie Lynch. That's something that's in my book. That is a Willie Lynch program. I don't need no man. You go, girl. All that shit is by design. That's where the rituals are happening in these regular routine things that you see over and over again. You know what I'm saying? Bruce Willis doing the same thing. The black man doing the same thing. Your subconscious mind sees it as one long, continuous sentence. You get what I'm saying? That's why you always see these, 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 these white people trying to do recreate. Like, there's a movie. I don't even know the name of it. Um, it's a, you probably won't even see it. It's actually a good movie. We only went because Khadijah had some uh, tickets from her job. And it's out on DVD now. It's about this young white kid who, who um, – he he played. He's a wrestler. He gets adopted by this family. This is one of those slice of life stories with this new actor. This fucking kid. Okay, Paul Giamatti is in it. He's the dude that paid, played pig vomit in the Howard Stern movie. He mm-hmm. uh, uh, he, they, he was calling him pig vomit. Um, let me see. I'll try to get it while I'm still talking because I'll find it. I'm just going to go imdb.com. And I'm going to tell you the name of this movie. You have to see it for this reason. You have to see it for this reason. Hold up. I'm typing this in now because I definitely want you all to see this private. I'll find one of the movies that he, this dude was in. And, um, okay, he was in the Howard Stern movie. Once I click on his name, I'm going to let you know what the name of this movie. His name is Paul Giamatti. If you, you will know the guy. He's a funny white actor, um, and he's been around. And I'm going to tell you exactly now because I'm on his page the name of this movie. Uh, uh, Win Win, I believe that's the name of it. Let me just click it to make sure. I believe it was Win Win. And in this movie, um, yes, that's the name of the movie. It's out now called Win Win. They use a new actor. I'm sorry, y'all still there? Yeah, we here, go. Okay, all right. I hit the hit the phone. This new actor. Um, in fact, I'll tell you his motherfucking name. Um, he's the spitting image of a young Sean Penn, and his name is Alex, Alex Schaefer, S-H-A-F-E-R, to the point where it is fucking eerie, fucking eerie. I mean, see, now, if anybody knows the early Sean Penn, he was, in fact, he was married to Madonna. He was America's number one badass. He was in a movie called Bad Boys, where I was too young to see, but still snuck in to see it. He was kicking all these Mexican asses and black air. Asses, he beat motherfuckers with 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 uh, 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 pillowcases full of sodas. Real shit that that he could never survive doing in a real live jail. Badass, and then his antics outside were badass, pissing on shit and 
kicking shit over and beating up power. So that white power type thing with Sean Penn, they need that bad boy in America as well. So this little Sean Penn is old and dignified now and helping people in Iraq. They can't have that. This Alex Shakespeare kid, insanely like Sean Penn. Uh, uh, Brad Pitt, he's nothing but a young Robert Redford. They keep on going. And I'm, if I think more, there's more. All these people are rehashed. They were saying Mary Tyler Moore, iconic shit. That girl from Friends who had the same haircut as Mary Tyler Moore. They, what they're trying to do is create this everlasting life thing because they don't have it. What they need us to do is believe it because we're the ones with the power to grant them that shit. You get what I'm saying? We're the ones with the power to grant them that. So it's not really for, it's, it's for them so they can believe that, that this Marilyn Monroe never died. They will kill their own for that. Not saying rituals don't happen and this, that, the other, but, you gotta, but we can't give them all of that. You get what I'm saying? Because then that's another way of saying, well, that's Willie Lynch is working. We don't eat unless the master say eat. We don't right. die unless the master say die. We need, to, re, we need to examine that. Like now, our now, first, hold on. Now what's, your, mm-hmm. now, what's your breakdown on the fact that even now, the niggas still have to be the first one to get killed in the movie? Um, see, that's a ritual. You get what I'm saying? That's a stereotype because it shows you, uh, 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 you, you and usually uh, it, it's the youth and they die. They're showing you you are not relevant. Uh, actually, what's, uh, which we were such a force that they actually had to put us in movies. Yeah, like, Half these motherfuckers get in. So when's the last time you see a Native American in a right. movie? Getting to, right. to, so the idea is if I, you don't you exist in movies. I finished watching mm-hmm. um, Ty with um, – Holly Berry in it, and mm-hmm. but niggas, nigga, but the nigga got. I mean, first one who got killed is the black dude. Oh, dude. Oh, right, dude. all the time. And the all second the one that got killed was another black dude, but this was the younger dude. You uh-huh. know, damn. Well, remember, <laughs> re- remember this. Check this out. Remember that that movie, Galaxy Quest. Right. Um, it was a spoof on um, Star Trek and all the rest of that that genre. Right. And in Galaxy Quest, um. These people from another dimen- uh, another world came down to Earth and found these actors that used to do a star. You know, they had the Trekkie set up and the star like that. And they said, "We your your movies. We watched them shit, and we thought your world was real." And they said, and then they tell you like, um, NASA used to send episodes of I Love Lucy out. They said because of the airwaves that these signals are bounced on satellites. The TV, our TV shows go out deeper, deeper, deeper in the universe. Now, if they're always showing TV shows using mythology and them as the gods, not only what they're hoping, two things, and I got this in channels, they're hoping um, to set up a mythology to actually, because remember, this whole matrix is nothing but light and sound. So they're broadcasting light and sound of them as gods, as everlasting life as the black man getting killed first, which means he's not going to exist where we're trying to go. They're trying to create an everlasting life. So all of that's connected. Marilyn Monroe, that imagery, never dying, that, that same shit Bruce Willis always saving the day, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the same shit just rehashed. What they're trying to do is send these waves out of light and sound and create a reality, create a, rea- a place to go after they die, because where you go is based upon your mind. And you if you can, if remember, the Dogon said anything you can imagine is just as real as what we're calling reality. That's yeah. in that Stratton book, uh, Signs and Symbols of the Dogon by yeah. Stratton. He was given some uh, 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 understanding on how the Dogon people thought. So this right. is absolutely real. So they're trying to build an afterlife. These, you see these suburb houses. You don't even see shit like that no more with white folks. You get what I'm saying? Most of that shit is 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 is, is what I'm seeing out here, and all black people living it. You don't see a lot of that on TV because they're not trying to take you. Uh, 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 they're trying to get away. They're trying to escape. So this is another method. So you know, and at the same time, it programs us without us even knowing this same repetition. So they're trying to kill us. They'll show you. A serving and dying for them. You get what I'm saying? But we get mythologies now. Think about this now. We get mythologies now where the old gods die for these new gods. You get what I'm saying? Or the, tit- the Titans, which are us, gave up their blood as they were thrown in Hades. 
so we can rise. So that's their black dude that gets died that represents the old titan or the old god dying, and he's usually help. He usually dies to help. Go on without me, Bob. You can do it. Boom! I'll take one for the team. Just rescue her, and he's dead. That's a, that's symbolic of the titan taking the hit. Going, um, him dying so the new god can rise. You get what I'm saying? So us in Haiti, we were the fathers uh, in Greek mythology. Kronos was the father of Zeus, and and he would actually swallow his kids, and and his wife hid his son Zeus, and then had him swallow a rock. And then right. if you line this up kabbalistically, it represents being in, in Chokma and above the abyss. Zeus represents um um. What's the one, one right under Dob? Not Chokma, but uh, Chassad. And that, that's the Sifera of Jupiter. Jupiter is, always, uh, is, uh, is also Zeus. Zeus makes his father spit up his brothers and sisters, and that right. became the rest of the Sifras all the way down the uh, 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 Tree of Life. So, and those were the, and then what these gods did was take their parents who were Titans. Remember, Bina and Chokma, all of that is Saturn. And Saturn is a titan, you get what I'm saying? And he threw them in the underworld, which was under formation, which became um, actually uh, Yashad, the moon, and then Malkuf, the underworld, an uh, afterthought. And, and so we're, there, we're actually parents of the gods. When we're saying, oh, God, 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 we're actually deeper than that, you get what I'm saying? Those gods are creation in, in that middle area from Shashad down to Yashad, those six sifras are the sifras of formation or creation. Those are the, that's actually the God level. We go beyond the God level, which is being in choke with the divine pair. And, and, you know, and, you know, that Andrides in the state of Ketha and on into the chaos realm, those three stages of nothingness or the trimensions of the cosmic birth. So, so they're trying, they're trying desperately, very desperately to create a future for themselves. They know they don't have the time on the planet. Now, me personally, I'm a little bit nice. I think they do. They can evolve like anybody else. A roach can evolve, evolve. But we're talking about time here. You get what I'm saying? And us being here for so long, our evolution, anything that's any, anything that's everything, anything you could ever think of, is ours by uh, inheritance. You get what I'm saying? So you're just talking about people who have much more work to do. So what they're doing is trying to create their mythology through the television. So Marilyn Monroe, Brad Pitt, they're trying to show you reincarnation with Marilyn Monroe to, to uh, 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 you know, James Dean was, James Dean was nothing but Sean Penn. And now they have a new Sean Penn, but Sean Penn grew up and out, and out served his purpose. You know, his brother's dead. You know what I mean? Chris Penn, who was a, also a, a actor. So that shit like that changes you. So he's fighting for guns and rights of Iraqi women now. That's un-James Dean. Plus, you need that young, die young guy. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, so now that's all their rituals. You get what I'm saying? And, and each time we break out is only something that they do that's not working. Rap music is the sheer definition of what they did that's not working. Obama is something they did because if, if it was business as usual, you would have had another white man. So the fact that they have to give you a black man to symbolically sit there to make you calm and relaxed, means that they're losing, because otherwise it would have been business as usual. So, All right. We so, got more questions. So you, Let's get to uh -huh. another question. 931, 931. You on the air. 931, area code. Peace. All right. 313, 313, area code. You on the line. Can you hear me? Yes, peace. Hey, what's going on, gentlemen? What's up, Patty? Hey, what's going on, bro, man? Hey, man, this is uh, Rich Black from um, Facebook, man, from Detroit, man. I've been on uh, What's good? What's good? Oh, it's all gravy, man. I've been listening to you about a year, man, and, you know, right. hey, you that deal. I, I wanted to ask some questions. I ain't questioning nothing you say because I'm going to validate something with you. Okay. I'm a veteran. I got out of Iraq about oh five. Uh huh. And um, I got sent over to Qatar for a four day um vacation, right? On a on a cruise boat, on one of them, mm -hmm. um, you know, like some pirate pirate boats. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Left behind, right, I had the access to the radio. My man who was who was staring up on he said, Yeah, you can go ahead and DJ. I said, I said, Okay, we can grab my C D collection. I threw in the master P C D, right? Mm-hmm. Another brother came along, he was a sergeant, he was he was he was from a whole nother unit, from another state. He was like, Man, take that master P C D out, that's not appropriate. So I said, mm. well, Okay. I threw in a Janet Jackson C D. And it was kinda like, you know, Janet Jackson got that jazzy, you know, vibration sound. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I listened to that CD, you know, put on my little lifeguard jacket, went and jumped in the water. Didn't think about it till three years later. That Persian mm-hmm. Gulf over there outside of Qatar was nothing but salt water. Mm-hmm. What well, was a big old baptism, but what it is, I do music, I produce here, out here in Detroit and everything. I got to talking about all that stuff I experienced over there, all that international shit, and start putting mm. it in my music, man, and just built up a whole nother fucking thing. So the thing with Jay-Z, what these cats mm-hmm. don't know, they got to look in the mirror and find out who the fuck they is, man. Right, right, right. Bottom right. line, bottom line, right. it ain't rocket science. Right, it, we're too reactionary, you know what I'm saying? We react to everything, and and actually that's what they count. That's, and see, that's the crazy part. We should know as grown folks, that's always what Madonna counted on. That's the only reason she's been relevant this long, because she relies on reaction, mind control. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? She, she, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and to, to even show you how mind control works, like they mm-hmm. said some of the veterans over there were playing to fuck with niggas. This, they used to blast mm-hmm. Lionel Richie. Hello, is it me you're looking mm-hmm. for? Blast that shit. He said... They was doing this as a, a, a war tactic, just loud, just to fuck with the Iraqi people. He said, word is one. They all started buying Lionel Richie albums. And Lionel Richie was the first American to do, to- they mm-hmm. do all the old shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. um, like he said, all his record sales started, the old shit. You know what I'm saying? Dancing on the ceiling. He said, this shit is starting to pick up again. He said, he's the first one to do a tour over there. So that repetitious music is a motherfucker. You get what I'm saying? Or or yeah. or the Meraki people is a motherfucker. They say you want to play, let's play. You know what I'm saying? It just sucked mm-hmm. up all that line of Richie love. But so yeah, so that's exactly what we talked about earlier. How this repetition is what it is. They get you with repetition. So the repetition in the music on the radio called rotation and repetition with the same rituals like the black man's always dying first or dying for their cause. You get what I'm saying? Dying for their cause. Mm-hmm. So what, um, when they showed you mm-hmm. the movie though about the um, three kings with the one that um, Ice Cube was in, and they was um, showing you that scene about Michael Jackson and he was fucking Mark Wahlberg out. Mark Wahlberg, you did this to, oh. you to Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> what was that in? <laughs> Why you did this to me to Michael Jackson? He said, "What you talking about? <laughs> Do to Michael Jackson? You made him hate himself." <laughs> wow. What was that in? What was, was that in? movie Three Kings. With Ice Cube. Oh, I have that movie. I only watched it once. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg. I yo, watched that, yo, it, that's, that's right, right, right. I remember that. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm going to watch that again. I have that. That was I only in Iraq. Watched it once. Right, they was in Iraq trying right. to save some money or something. Hey, wow, right. that's right. I'm going to watch that again. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, it's into it. Like, yeah, it, 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 it is. You know what I'm saying? But, again, Michael only did, you know, Bobby said this, and this was hella true. He only did what a lot of people would do on some extent if they had that type of money. But we all crazier than a motherfucker. And Michael Jackson, to me, he does, you know, he gets a pass any day. You know what I'm saying? For going that crazy. You know, um, oh, somebody else, I wrote something down. Somebody also said, oh, something interesting. Somebody wrote about the Titans, uh, the new movie. This is interesting. They did the movie The Immortals. And in The Immortals, I thought it was going to be the same old, same old soup just reheated where, you know, they, you know, they win and niggas are locked down, you know, because that's the energy. But the Titans got out, and then they restarted this war in heaven. What's interesting is that I'm thinking it's part two to the Immortals movie, but this is a second installment of that Clash of the Titans movie, which picks up on that Immortals movie. There was, uh, they, there's a lot of unofficial uh, continuations. There's a lot of unofficial tr- trinities. I can't remember the third one, but there was, oh, shit, I can't remember the second one. My man Tess used to do a lot of that, but there were three running movies in um, a row. One was Minority Report, 
I think it was all Tom Cruise movies, as a matter of fact. Well, here's another one I do know. They did a ritual with Sam Jackson with three unofficial movies, Snakes on the Plane, right. Freedom Land, and Black, and, and Black Snake Moan. It was all about shutting down the Kundalini at that time. It was a lot of shock to unity. Freedom Land, they locked down black people in this one area. It was about locking down the Kundalini people and, 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 and locking down the freedom. Snakes on the Plane was basically snakes on a higher plane, which um, the lady was studying, the, the, the flight attendant was studying to be a lawyer. That's my yacht. And Sam had a bald head. That's the pineal gland. He was at, at the front of a plane with snakes. That was risen Kundalini. The whole thing was to land that plane. To lower the kundalini, there was other things they said. That black snake moan was played by the white girl was the pure shakti energy. He right. chained it to a ra- to a radiator. That right. radiator represented the base of your spine where the kundalini hit, heat is. The chain always represents your spine. So he was trying to fuck everybody. He was trying to free the kundalini energy. Right. And um, so it was that was a whole unofficial tri- trilogy dealing with um, kundalini snake energy. You get what I'm saying? Okay. And um, that's another thing that I put in my Ever come ever forthcoming book. Now um, I kind of broke on somebody last week when they asked me about this this John Carter movie, which I didn't see yet. And this is the context I was breaking on them on. We we need you know everything should be well. What's up with this movie? What's up with that movie? Because there there again, that is us being reactionary. You get what I'm saying? They drop something and then we start getting to work as busy bees. Certain things are just interesting. You're going to do it. But there's a lot of things that I can do with movies, but I refuse to be their hoe. They drop John Carter, and, and we should already know, oh, they're going to do a Jesus Christ story. And based upon what we talked about today, them trying to constantly reinforce them as this figure that's going to save us, the planet, or has this higher cause that we, we are not involved in, we, we continuously do that to the point where, we, where, where we're becoming obsessed with being, reacting to them. Certain things you could just see for yourself to be cold, but it doesn't really need that much to be speaking on. Unless the kind of like Avatar, I spoke on that because it was what they were doing and what they were planning to do to Haiti. So for me to speak on that, we shut them down. And they was trying to raise up Bill Clinton as Jake Scully, the new, this, this new and he was over there as the ambassador. And when it was supposed to go to Wyclef John, and and. And if you remember in the movie, the black dude said, I will fly with you, meaning because he was the next one to take over the, take over that tribe. But he gave it to Jake Scully as well. So why yeah. Clef was playing yeah, why, that why dude. Why ended up getting shot um, in his hand while, um, while running, yo. While running. See, right, it was the same war thing. Wow, I didn't even know that. The same yeah. war thing being played out in Avatar. Home Tree was nothing but Haiti. You know, this is a thorough lecture that you can get now that I went through all of this at the time with channels. But once we shut them down, and all it takes to shut them down is to listen and to know. Once we bring in the conscious thought and all these people, look, this, this thing has close to 40,000 downloads on Mrs. Blue's show, you know what I mean, when she goes back. So once this thing is out the box and people know it, we fuck it up. That's why it's, that's why it's key to talk about things to bring them outside the box, not just to show how bad we are because we could decode John Carter, the fucking movie. If we can't decode that same old Jesus Christ bullshit by now, we don't deserve to. We, if, if it's something in it that needs to be outed, like, for instance, why am I talking about this Titan movie, the one that's coming out? Because this is some forward-moving shit. So now we're going to see, because they freed the Titans and there was this war in heaven. The Titans are us. The gods of this demiurge energy that seek to keep us ignorant and down here. So, so when we see this new Titan movie, that's the rich, that's the ritual that we're going to see what happens to these Titans if they get locked back. Because they're talking about the 2012, the freeing of the Titans. That's the energy being free. That's what they're talking about. So, what they're going to try to do to offset that and get black people to cheer for their own fucking demise. They did that in the. Uh, uh, X-Men with the beast in it. I think that was the third one. Yeah, with, with uh, the third X-Men, they had all these black people cheering for the X-Men when this nigga, when this nigga said, yo, the white boy was playing Yakub. He could steal all your power. He was playing the vampire. He was playing the white man. So when, 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 when Magneto, who is badass, said, well, we need to go murder this dude, get him off the planet. You know, how many times you see Magneto say, I want to see the God and you're a God. My name is Frank. No, what's your real name? Pyro and all that kind of shit. 
You know who they talking about. Shit, Stan Lee, who created the shit with some other dudes, um, said, we model Magneto and, and Professor X off of Dr. Martin Luther King and goddamn Malcolm X. Straight out. they not even bullshitting. He said, we did this for black people so they would connect with it, and black people did when that comic was out. Because we know we the mutants, these powers are coming in, so on and so forth. So forth. So there's a story about this mutant who can ex- a mutant who can ex- absorb all of these powers. The whole movie says you need to be who you are. You need to do this. You need to stay true. And I'm selling out. I'm getting rid of my powers. You follow what I'm saying? So so they know what they're doing, and they constantly programming you. So niggas was when the X Men stood in front of that building after Magneto moved that whole bridge. You know what I'm saying? You had um this uh, you had. Uh, uh, Phoenix as the straight Shakti energy, the rising reborn Phoenix. There's a mythology where Shiva was mad at the world and he turns his third eye on this lake so he wouldn't burn up the earth. They did that with Cyclops and gave rise to that sh- to Phoenix, Shakti energy. Came in a whirlwind. So you're talking about the rise, that's what all that Magneto shit and all that, the, the, the so-called bad X-Men were all about. And when, the, when these fake-ass uh, a Wolverine niggas came. They stood in front of niggas and they say, "Yay, hooray! Wolverine and Storm is here." In the end, Wolverine kills Shakti. Wolverine represents the beast. So he he's the one that hit her right in the lower abdomen, which means the root chakra. So her energy, she shut it down. That's what that ritual is about. Even we don't understand it consciously. Subconsciously, we know our mythology. We know why we're here. He just opened up her chakra and set her sent her ass back into normal reality. Her name was Kate again or whatever. So they're doing these rituals to speak to our archetype mind, things that we know. They just Mythology is just our archetype energy in story form. So that's why they follow these formats and all these movies. In fact, there is no other story. Every story needs a hero. Every story needs a bad guy. You get what I'm saying? Even if it's a love story, the bad guy becomes the ignorant that perhaps will tear them apart. So they're following our archetype mythology, and and so even if it doesn't talk to our conscious mind, meaning we don't know it, it talks to a better part of us, and it's programming a better part of us. You get what I'm saying? So so they're doing rituals. More of these rituals are in movies, um, but if you know these things, you got to just know your mythology first. If you know these things and what these things are representing, Wolverine, Wolverine is the beast. And they're calling him Beast through it. There's another motherfucker in there named Beast. You get what I'm saying? And Beast, if you watch the fourth one, he was a genius until he took that blue serum and he went more. They kept telling him he was a genius, was figuring out all of this shit, and they kept telling him, you need to be yourself, which was a beast. They kept telling him, be a beast. Be a beast. Be a beast. That's who you are. Let your feet out. Climb the walls. You're a beast. But he was fighting being a scientist. You get what I'm saying? It's nothing but the black man. The black man, you get what I'm saying? Turn, they're telling him, be a beast, and he did. You get what I'm saying? But they're trying to tell you that's your true self, and your true self was a genius. So you, you just got that's how they, I, more than Madonna doing something at the Super Bowl, which, again, you shouldn't turn it off. Um, it is something you should do. And this is what I was going to say. Yeah, Jean Grey was her name. This is what I was going to say. Um, during the Super Bowl with Janet Jackson showing her titty, go back to that symbol. That eight-pointed star is the star of Brigitte. Uh, not Brigitte, Bridget. Brigitte was, became the Celtic goddess uh, uh, Bridget, whose day is February uh, 2nd, which falls in the first week of the, or what, is it the se- whatever week they do the Super Bowl ritualistically, first or the second week, her day is close to that day. And so it, the whole so, – I can't even remember because this was so long ago that um, – me and Bobby was talking about it. I said, yeah, um, because when I studied that star that Janet Jackson had on her nipple, that exact symbol is the star of Bridget, the Celtic goddess Bridget. I said, so all that shit is ritual. You get what I'm saying? And whatever it was, I can't remember, Justin Timberlake was playing that. That's in the Goddess Book of Days, her same day. So it is rich. The Super Bowl itself is a ritual. But Madonna was in there with her own agenda. And, again, even if I'm totally wrong, which I have no problem with, and, and she was the one that was all set up, you can't do nothing about it. We need to start doing, as Aline's Queen said, our own shit. What are you going to do about it? Now that Whitney's gone, what have you done to raise 
her up back when she is now the the worst idea they could have had was was murdering her, which really didn't happen. Like I said, if you I can tell you through channel it didn't happen. But if you don't want to believe me, which you don't have to, and I'm really comfortable with that. You just got to think more logic. If they did it, you can't do nothing about it. If they didn't do it, I mean, if you got down to the bottom of it, what could you do? Just say, oh, man, they killed Whitney. You get what I'm saying? It's it's not good enough. You get what I'm saying? Really? more energy? If they was killing some people, it would be children. That's much more energy. And they, would, they could kill an unknown child and get that energy. Because at the end of the day, for Madonna to do it, what then – if everybody said, well, it's a ritual, it's a ritual, then somebody explain to me the ritual. What energy are they getting by setting it up with Madonna? Madonna is old and beat up and done for her new album. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, come on. You know what I'm saying? Come on. So, no, they're heavy with ritual and heavy with, um, uh, 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 but their rituals, is, I can see, is not as sinister as we making them out. We're giving them too much professionalism. You get what I'm saying? And the best they got is, even if I wanted to be a writer, uh, just a, a movie writer, the first thing they tell you is study Shakespeare and mythology because, because this is the format which is in all stories. So if you study mythology and, and then you start to study other, other writers, other successful writers, and then if you look at them, you go, okay, I see what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Um, the born identity. The born identity, the first one, um, there was one that said the born supremacy. The, the, the word the was uh, red or whatever. The word born was red, and the word supremacy was white. And Tess pointed this shit out. He said the born supremacy, and he pointed it out. and said it's actually saying the white supremacy. Actually, the word born was white or something like that. So he pointed out, if you look at the post, he said you're seeing the white supremacy. So what they're doing is just trying to maintain their hold on us. You get what I'm saying? Rap was one of those things, if you can't beat them, join them. So all they had to do, and it took them a hell of a long time to show you how powerful rap was for them to degrade it, you get what I'm saying, into what it is today. And, and really, like I said, at the end of the day, that's still all good because what we're talking about here is, is – um, what we're talking about here is – is the energy is now forced to go to a higher dimension. You get what I'm saying? Whenever we bring the energy down, let's just say jazz or, or whatever, you got gods who came here to gods who came here to lay this thing down so we can use that particular form of creation for our alchemy here. So you got you, you, it's nothing but formulas. So jazz, rap. Uh, 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 disco, whatever it is, the light bulb, whatever it is that we create and you see a pantheon that comes in the form of an era, era, all we're doing is coming here or pulling down a certain healing frequency, a, a certain frequency of change that's necessary at that time. So there are many forms. There's many forms of music and creation that's never hit this planet. We wouldn't even know how to fathom it here because it's not needed here. You get what I'm saying? It's not needing, needed here. But these things are. And when it goes, when it goes, you got to look at this as a joyous thing because that means it came and did the work. And now it's returned to its pristine self, this form, this, this, this paradigm that rap is. Rap, jazz is a paradigm. It wasn't just music. It was a, it was a mindset. It was a way to be. The shit that KRS One is trying to convince you of. It's a culture. It's a, it's not just music. It's it's how you eat, how you make doo doo. It's rap style. It, that's true because it's more than just it's more than just just the music of that day. So it's a success in the con. It, it came, kicked ass, and it's going. You get what I'm saying? It came, kicked ass, and now it's gone. So it, it so so it's really good that. The more we are uh, uh, in this degraded state here, that means the more our power is somewhere else, and that's the somewhere else that we're rising to. We're doing the wrong thing. We, I understand the concept of us having to make shit comfortable for us, but to try to bring rap back is really hustling backwards because you're trying to pull something that's already been done. You know what I'm saying? That's almost like bringing, you know what I'm saying, bell-bottoms back, you get what I'm saying, 
window pants, shark skins and alpacos and mock necks, British walkers and playboys. You know what I mean? Those shits was powerful in this day. But if you walk in with a goddamn Shams the Baron on, me and you going to have some questions. You know what I mean? Like, what's really going on? You know what I mean? So, you know, you know, some goddamn Coca-Cola shirts. All that shit was insane. You know what I mean? Back in the days. And you may see somebody with a throwback on and, they, and they're able to pull a shit off. But for the most part, we if they're doing it and pulling it off, they understand it to be a throwback. You get what I'm saying? And, and it's regarded as such. So if we the evolutionary people and the people who are moving on, you know what I'm saying, you shouldn't be interested in going back and route. And I'm talking to conscious people because I get them all the time, then they're going to take over. We need to understand that it was systematically um, placed by, as I told you, these people in L.A. who talked about one thing, gangster rap, and they have houses while we still live with our mother. It became lucrative to talk that way, and it became ridiculous to talk with native tongue, with we, we Q-tipping the rest of these niggas. So they pushed it out. And when they did push it out, it still emerged in something they call spoken word, the original spoken word, the original saw before this nigga went crazy. Jessica Care Moore, even that dude Lemon, and a few of the originals. And that's where the consciousness started that, that got taken away from out of the rap psyche. That's where it emerged because, like I said, the energy just transformed. But they shut that shit down with something called deaf poetry. And in the first show of Deaf Poetry, where it was supposed to be poetry was for the people, and the rising of poetry now became con The re-rising of poetry was a conscious one. Then you had people on most deaf fake ass hosting this shit. Then you have white people, Chinese people doing poetry about how they can't get a cab. You know what I'm saying? How they hate, you know, you know people asking, Chinese people saying they hate duck sauce and doing it, which was funny and all the rest of that shit, but it no longer reflected the rise that was now happening with spoken word once again, meaning they came out the boat going pop because they had the vehicle already on HBO based upon the Deaf Poetry Jam. And nobody was doubting it because after Deaf Poetry Jam, you can, lace, you can name at least 25 stars that came out of that medium. You get what I'm saying? So when they did, uh, when, I'm sorry, when they did Deaf Comedy Jam, you can name 25 stars that came out of that medium. The Bernie Max, the uh, Chris Tucker came out the gate. This third film in, 20 million. You get what I'm saying? When Denzel, I did the research on this for my book, too. Denzel just get, became the $20 million uh, man. Will Smith, ex-rapper, $20 million. Like I said, their job was to give the ignorance the money and the, and the real shit skip, and skip off. What's his name? Cuba Gooden Jr., who was rising, I, I, if I remember correctly, didn't make $20 million yet. Chris uh, uh, Tucker, Christopher, uh, uh, what's the other, the, the skinny nigga, um, the comedian? Um, Chris, um, uh, uh, you know, the other Chris. Everybody hates Chris, Chris. Um, you right, know, Chris, 50 cents for order. Chris Rock. Chris Rock, $20 million man. If you, you can see for yourself, go to IMDb. I know everyone should know that. Anything you want to find out, about, look at their biology, uh, uh, biographies, each of these black um, um, actors. Sometimes they'll show you what they made on a movie. Martin Lawrence, $20 million man. Um, uh, Will Smith, he broke $30 million with Ali. And then the first one to start doing this was Forrest Gump and um, Jim Carrey. Started getting residuals for movies. You don't get residuals for movies. They're not like record sales. You get your fa salary, and that's that. So, so like all that boys in the hood. I think he got twelve thousand Cuba Gooden, something like that, and maybe like twenty thousand for that movie where he was playing the illiterate dude with 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 with, with Crocodile Dundee. Then thirty five thousand for uh, that movie he did with Jack Nicholson. He eventually got a twenty dollar pay, a twenty million dollar payoff in something, and, and maybe I'm not even sure. I don't remember that, but that's when he, one one million dollars was his. When he, when we thought he was the man, he was still getting one million dollars. Denzel seven million, eight million. When he was motherfucking Den the fuck Zell, this was happening around the time he did the movie The Siege, and and that's around the time he started getting like ten million, twenty million. Now he's a twenty million dollar man. Robert De Niro never broke $20 million yet. 
That's why you see him always in these movies. Sam Jackson, never $20 million. That's why he's in every fucking movie. Um, Forrest Gump was the first nigga to waive his salary, um, Tom Hanks, but get a cut afterwards. And, you know, residual sales. Or, or, or at whatever. So, so, in other words, he got a box office share. And um, Jim Carrey took it to the next level. He got $30 million for the Grinch, and then he got um, – residuals plus uh, merchandise. So all them Grinch cereals and Grinch dolls, whatever Grinch at the time, Jim Carrey was in on that. Will Smith was a $20, man, $20 million man early for his movies and got he got residuals on Malcolm X and then on Men in Black and more, movie, more money for Men in Black, that franchise. Uh, Chris Tucker, little money at the beginning, but he signed a contract with Columbia or whatever one that was distributing his films starting with that rush hour shit. Second rush hour, twenty million, the third even more. And um and uh Martin Lawrence, twenty million out the gate. And remind you, our serious actors, pennies in comparison, you know, seven million is a lot of fucking money. But pennies in comparison, they see again, as I pointed out earlier, they would give you all of this money to raise up our idiocracy. So First, uh, that's a science, that's a, a ritual, uh, more than a ritual, that's a, a methodology for selling us out. I already pointed out that we used to go to the West Coast, and them niggas had quick, you should have seen kid DJ Quick's house when we thought he was an idiot at the time. And we was living at home, scrambling. You give what I'm saying? Ice tea, houses on the side of the shit that you see in Hollywood movies. He had that early. And he was, and all he was making was that, you know, them corny-ass records. You know what I'm saying? I am a nightmare walking, all that corny shit. He's, and I met I see one of the most wonderful people that you would ever meet on the planet. Like, we gigging on him. You know, me and Super Lover see he's at the Apollo. He's, la he's sitting there letting us gig on him. Then we felt guilty. He was just so, yeah, you know what I mean? I mean, he was real humble, real cool, real cool people. You know what I'm saying? All ritual. Why do you think Ice Kid made Cop Killer, which was a rock song, they gave you all the propaganda along with it, and then his net, he, they gave him a job as a cop on the goddamn, uh, 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 you know, on, on them crime shows. They're subconsciously telling you, we're going to make you our bitch. Ice Cube is the number one bitch. When they did that movie Triple X, Mr. Fuck the Police, Fuck the May, and I Choked This Motherfucker, in the movie Triple X, he's trying to save the president and took an arrow for the president. And when they showed his pictures, because in the movie they showed Ice Cube's pictures, like, in various stages of his life as they, you know, as this was in the movie. You know, they, they made it a part of the movie. They made sure they showed a picture from straight out of Compton when he had the jerry curl, uh, or, or, or whichever one he did where it was fuck the police. Meaning they pro they subconsciously telling you, even the most militant fuck the pol police nigga, the end result for you, you must save the president and even die for the president, no matter who you are. This is how they getting you. This is how they getting us. You get what I'm saying? This is why they letting shit go on. Eminem's fucking story in 8 Mile, which I haven't watched fully to this day, is this out of shit, out of luck. He's, remember I told you, rap music was the voice of a people that was stifled, that had no voice that was special and different, that needed to talk. They gave you all of that shit in the movie 8 Mile. All of that. That's the rituals we need to be looking out for. All of that. Ice, uh, 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 Eminem is this white boy, this downtrodden, poor white boy that nobody knows his fucking story. So he goes to tell the black people his fucking story. You get what I'm saying? When the whole rap shit was about telling our fucking story to a world who we were invisible or thought we were invisible to at the time. You get what I'm saying? So all of, all of this here is more effectively are the subtleties. Those are the rituals because the subtle rituals are the things that go just underneath the consciousness to the subconscious mind where all the programming, the subconscious mind dictates your reality. They are trying to control your reality. That's why the black man always dies first. That's why the black woman don't never need no man. And you don't want to cross her. You know what I'm saying? I've never really met black women like that. The black women I see on TV, oh, don't you mess with no black women. That, that, that shit don't exist. All my aunts are sweethearts. My moms, my grandmothers, 
Tolerance. You get what I'm saying? Will tolerate your black, ignorant ass to the end of time. You never see this idea of this tolerant black woman. This idea of everything you do and say is under this microscope of her shaking her fucking head at you and telling you, I don't need no man, you can move the fuck on, Tyrone, and all the rest of that kind of shit. Because in the Willie Lynch letter, the agenda for uh, 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 the agenda for the black woman is to make her become independent and non-dependent on her man as an equal or non-dependent on her man to handle the masculine side of what he's supposed to be doing for as a protector of her energy. So what they said was we need to make her independent. If we make her independent of him, dependent on us, what she'll do is make her man into a girl because she doesn't have a need to make him stand up as a protector, her son. She doesn't have the need to make him stand up as a protector. So she's trying to now protect him. So she makes him docile. Yes, sir. No, no problem, sir. Makes him always understanding the truth or reality comes from anybody who's a white man. Steve Coakley used to say, I just told y'all niggas this shit, but let me give you a good white source. Remember when he used to say that? Because what he was talking about was, he was talking about was, um, because we are so mind controlled, we need white people to tell us what's good or what's not good. I've seen on blog talk radio shows black people interviewing white people, then go, "There's a little controversy in the uh, community. Uh, should we be initiated or should we not be initiated?" And like I've seen Bobby Hemmings come on and speak to it thoroughly, and he's supposed to be this uh, uh, our master occult teacher, the one who brought us the most occult information in our time today. And, and I've seen him speak to it to the same person thoroughly and accurately and explain it and give scholarship on the shit. Soon as the white boy come on, should this, you know what the white boy said? He said, I was homeless, then I found chaos magic. That was my initiation. And the dude accepted that shit without, which is a true answer, but accepted it without questioning, without, mm hmm, I see, but what if? None of that. So uh, even in the best of us who are bringing this conscious information, it, that's one of the biggest things. They are going on their, on their swagger. So their swagger is what's been running us on TV, and, you know, and their swagger is this idea of you being poor and needing money. So you, that's always been the idea, to give them exactly what they think they want, which is this hollow, fantasistic idea of safety through their money, and you become their bitch. In other words, they bought and paid for your ass. Wheezy. It all, uh, Mace, Jay-Z, is a bought and paid for bitch, even if they have – enough money for them and, and generations of their kids, the fact that they sit there and train other kids who will never, ever reach that level of financial success, not through just, not through the method that they're teaching. They're better off getting rich dad, poor dad, if that's the case, not through the method. That, so he's misleading and, and causing these false dreams for all of these kids that listen to him is the, the ultimate in the sellout shit. You get what I'm saying? We will never have what Nelly has. Not on a mass scale. So for him, for him not to even acknowledge that shit, you know what I'm saying? Tell a motherfucker to stay in school at least based upon their level of thought. You get what I'm saying? They're not even doing that kind of shit. And this is because they understand they are selling you out. You get what I'm saying? Selling you out. So the, the nerve of this motherfucker to, to at least at, none of chaos wants very little of what Chaos One vibrates with me, but I never would try to challenge that shit because at least he's trying to tell you to think a little bit fucking more. You get what I'm saying? And it only doesn't resonate with me because I grew up in Queensbridge. Other than that, he'll be the prophet and the teacher and all the rest of that shit because he is for some folks. That's what rap was about, raising your fucking self up. You know what I'm saying? Raising your thoughts up. It didn't have to be deep, but it was deeper than doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? Deeper than talking about nothing. Rap now is the constant degradation of what it, of your mind. You know what I'm saying? Just to listen to that shit is is beyond me. You get what I'm saying? But you know that's this age, born and birth in the concept of mind control. You get what I'm saying? Born and birthed in it. So you know, you still there, brother? Oh yeah, be listening. Oh okay. <laughs> I know I went on that long rant. rant. I was like, I didn't hear Lean chime in for a while. You know hey, what I mean? I, I didn't need to. Oh, okay, okay. You know, no, it's all good. 
I so, mean, you know, and we want to say, too, let me say, brother, that, because we didn't say it, Y'all know by now, if you don't know by now, God darn it, y'all, y'all lost that Aleem is coming live. We're doing, um, I'm bringing him in for a live lecture. This is already Sunday. If you're in, if you, if you in the uh, Atlanta area, come on down. Holy Orgasm, Science of Sex, Art of Healing, Holistic Health. Um, you can now pay at the door. Or if you need more information, email Atlanta Lectures at hotmail.com. It's at 675 Metropolitan Parkway, Suite 3118 up in Atlanta. Doors open at 2. The lecture will start around 3. We'll have a couple of people talking, to get, you know, but uh, no other, just, you know, the intro and lean. We'll take a break. And the doors are going to close at 10, you know, and, you know, Aleem's going to deliver, you know what I mean, as much as he needs to. So if you're in the area and it's in your reach, then you need to do it. I wanted to shout out April, who's in the building. I don't know if she's still in the chat room. I wanted to give her a shout out earlier. She's one of the sweetest people I met online. She also knows Aleem. You know, you know, one time I sent her some stuff. And, like, maybe a long later, she said, that stuff actually works. And she sent a little bit of cheese over. I'm like, you didn't have to do that. But she's just a sweetheart like that. She's always offering her help for something and something. So I know she'll go back and download. So I want to say thank you to April for showing up as she always does. And, you know, so you know, just to get that out the way, I know we got a little bit more time left, and we could do it. If there, I don't know if there's any more questions. But basically, you know, that's, that's the thing. Like, the media is our biggest enemy. enemy. There was a director, and I talked about him, called Oscar Mishore. And I got a channel from him, A Badass Lucid Dream, and he explained in thorough detail about how all this we fear about inoculations and chemtrails and clone food. He said the melanin is actually evolving and adapting to that shit. Um, He said what's constant and we're not adapting to and their biggest weapon is actually movies. Now, Oscar Mishore was the Spike Lee of his day. There was a, one of the biggest known archive racist movies called Birth of a Nation, a silent movie about the Ku Klux Klan and all the stereotypes you can fit in one umbrella, umbrella about black folks. And this was, you know, one of the big deals back then. He actually made a movie back then. This is in 19, you know, oh, not, maybe 1919, don't get me on the date, but it was before any of these niggas were supposed to be doing that. He made a reply to that. He did movies called, uh, he did silent movies, then went into the talkies. So it's in that era. But he's a black man, Spike Lee. Spike Lee is is is, is totally, totally Oscar Mishore in energy wise. He talked about Oscar Mishore, and um, I don't know how to spell his last name. I always forget to write it down because I never know how to talk about him. And you you'll be able to find him. Find him. It's, it's a French name, black man, and a heavy channel from him. He said it was him who used to come to me, and that's how I was able to decode movies. So if you want to uh, get into movie decoding, which only should be the beginning or practice because the, ultimately you're supposed to be decoding your dreams because they come in the same form. In fact, that's why they do movies like that because they're trying to mimic their dreams the way the subconscious mind talks. And um, you call on Oscar Mishaw, or um, um, it's spelled like that, uh, uh, I'm a, uh, there's a picture of him in, um, I'm not going to find it, uh, cause it's always hard to find. Um, let me see, see if I can do it. Oscar, uh, it's going to be hard cause I really don't know how to spell his name. Me, uh, it's with an X in it. Uh, <laughs> Oscar Michu or some shit. It's just, what, wow. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, not going to be able to find it quick. Don't worry. Uh, Somebody's going to pull it up. Yeah, it's mine for that. Anyway, um, very important. One the, one, oh, okay, hold up, hold up. I found it. Oscar Mishore. Uh, his last name is uh, spelled M-I-C-H-E-A-U-X. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, he's, he's French or something, yeah. and you need to see his, you need to see his shit. You get know what I'm saying? Oscar Mishore. Not, well, and let me just make sure. Because I know this is close enough to the spelling, uh, Google's going to find it. Because I'm looking at this, but I don't see his whole thing. So, I, you know, I want to be clear on what that is. Anyway, very powerful brother, very powerful uh, uh, comedic spirit that is with us. You know, he showed me a lot of comedic shit. Yes, that is how you spell it. When you spell it, he's got a Wikipedia. 
Um, uh, Oscar, last name is M I C H E A U X. He was born in 1884 and died March 25th, uh, 1951. Probably one of the more powerful brothers I got with, and he showed me a lot of hieroglyphs and comedic shit. And he told me it was always with him that helped me in Teft decode shit. And if you get with him, he can bust down a lot of mythology for you. All you need to do is put up a picture, read his story to understand. I'm telling you, that's probably one of the most powerful energies. I spoke before. We deal with these archetype energies, you know, Oshun, Shakti, Lakshmi, Vadi, Shiva, Pan, you know, uh, Hanuman, you name all of that. But some of these gods have been down here on Earth and understand our plight. And those usually are the powerful gods that we need to get with. So how did the gods come in our day, which the only avenue was left for us at the time was entertainment. That's where we could display our stuff. So that's why a lot of these uh, entities, these gods that come to me, these goddesses that come with in entertainment, because that's the last form of expression. Prior to that, it was like Elijah Muhammad, uh, uh, Malcolm X, uh, 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 Marcus Garvey, N Nat Turner, political figures when we were still dealing with the political thing. And now it more went to these entertainment figures, even though it was there. So now... Those, since they've been here and understand our story, they paid rent before. Those are the ones to get. They know the Holocaust down there. Some of these archetype energies never lived down here. They were thought forms that were created when we were more in a pristine state, in the golden age or the silver age. So these things were created with pristine thought, and you, and if your frequency is up, you can get with these pristine things. But when you're asking them for low-frequency things, I need to help my rent, help with getting Booby out of jail and all the rest of that shit, it doesn't really it, – it, it will work. You can make it work, but it's harder going because that energy was created when there was no jails and, and corruption. So it's a little bit foreign. That energy is better served by raising up in you, the golden, you know, because it, it all resides in you. So you're better using that for understanding. You're better using things that were created in corrupt times. I explained to people how in 2009 that the saints actually came marching in. Because, you know, I, like anybody else, I wouldn't fuck with no saints. Why? Then uh, St. Anna was the first one that came and said, because us as African mixed the saints with the African deity, they actually evolved. And they are actually with us now. So I explained, I did a whole thing on how you can deal with the saints now because the saints are configured for every earthly need. So instead of dealing with Oshun for, to find a boyfriend, there are saints that could do it that are here and configured and now have gone to a frequency level based upon our evolution that they can actually help. You get what I'm saying? So also with that, these Bruce Lee is more important to block your shit than, than this deity because he's been down here. He knows what it is. That, I cannot stress that anymore for anybody who does this kind of thing. You know what I mean? Those are the things to do it. You know what I mean? Those are the things and ways to do it. You know what I mean? With the with these gods who've been here. You know what I'm saying? Whitney Houston being released, no matter how she got there, and remember, nothing you can do about it, is still in our favor, no matter what happened. If we could communicate with her, let's say she died this traumatic death. When I seen her, she, she was telling me, Early on, she was pointing to her throat. So she did, she drowned. She definitely was pointing to her throat. And she was, she was saying she don't understand why it was. You know, and I went through a whole thing that her and Bobby are actually one entity. And I explained the entity name is, um, it, it looks like it's Maximum, but it's Mashimon. It's pronounced Mashimon. First world on the radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceed 
many levels in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding levels in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this is, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs>